Chapter 28 Alpha Marcus Pulling the car up to Abel Saxon's castle, there is a male vampire standing at the entrance. Greetings, you must be Alpha Marcus. He spoke. Yes, I am Alpha Marcus, stepping forward, where is my mate? She is safe Alpha Marcus she is with Father Abel, please follow me. The four of us follow the vampire into the castle, walking through we pass hundreds of, of other vampires, all hissing at us. We keep our heads up and walk through showing them they do not intimidate us. When we reach the top of the stairs, I catch Chloe's scent. The vampire knocks on a door at the end of the hall. Come in. Father, Alpha Marcus is here. I step in the room and Chloe is instantly in my arms. Chloe. When I smell Marcus, then see him enter the room I jump from my chair and fly into his arms. I cling to him tight crying. Oh, my goddess, Chloe, are you okay my love? Marcus, asks checking me over. I am fine, I managed to escape the tower Reggie held me in, I said. There was no way I was sticking around that tower to find out what his plans for me were. I told them. Chloe, my dear, I am so glad you are okay and safe, says Alpha Brooks. I let go of Marcus and hug Alpha Brooks. Alpha Marcus, it is a pleasure to see you again, says Abel extending his hand out to Marcus. King Abel, it has been a long time, says Marcus. How is it you came to have my mate? Your feisty little mate wandered onto my coven, she showed me no threat being a lone wolf, so I brought her here to explain what she was doing here, said Abel. How did you get here Chloe? Marcus asks. I gladly fill them in on my escape and how King Abel took me in. Thank you, Abel, for taking care of her and returning her safely to me, this means a great deal to me. Marcus says. It was my pleasure Alpha Marcus, as I told Chloe I do not intend to have a war with the wolves, I like my quiet life fine. Said Abel. Marcus laughs. You always did old friend, you always did. I grab onto Marcus again never wanting to let go. He kisses my head holding me tight. I was so scared I had lost you forever my love, I love you so much. I missed you, too, I just want to go home, I say. You will, my love, you will. Before you take your leave, Alpha Marcus, I would like to have a word with you. Says Abel. Of course, Abel. Says Marcus. My daughter Penny showed up here today, said Abel. I thought you banished her years ago, says Marcus. I did, and I have not heard from her since that day, not until today when she showed up asking for her mother's spell books. Abel informs him. I see, says Marcus. She has done something horrible to your family, I was unaware of said Abel. And what would that be besides marring my father for his money? Marcus asks. I knew my daughter wanted revenge on your father for killing her mother, said Abel. But I have just been informed today how far she actually went. You see my daughter had put on spell on your father which made him kill your mother with no control of his own. It appears when I ratted her out on being a witch, she lost the grip she had on your father. The spell was broken once she disappeared from the room, that is why he had fainted. I spoke. Now, she is after her mother's spell books to make a stronger spell to come after me for losing her crip, I said it. I watched the look on Marcus's face. You mean to tell me, my brother and I banished our father, and hated our father for something he had no control over? Asked, Marcus. It would appear that way, said Abel. This is bullshit, Damien shouts. I was here, Damien, I heard it from her myself, I said. Penelope was just beginning to learn from Martha when Alistair killed her. She wanted revenge and turned to the dark magic in Martha's books, so I hide them from her. She is not very strong in the dark magic. 
But she knows enough to cause mischief I am afraid, said Abel. I let go of Marcus and stepped towards Abel. Wait, are you talking about Martha Saxon? I asked. Yes, she was my wife, my mate and Penny's mother, said Abel. That was, until that day seven years ago when Alistair killed her. Says Abel. No, he didn't, I said. I am afraid he did, my child. Abel says. No, Abel Martha Saxon was the witch healer of my pack the Opal Moon Pack. She had a scar on her right cheek another which gave her. I said, what? How long ago was she the healer of your pack? Asked Abel. My father Corvin Slater found her near death at the east border of our territory seven years ago. She had no memories of her life other than being ambushed by a witch named Raven. My father took her in and gave her a place to live helping heal people. I spoke. No, you must be mistaken my child, you must be speaking of another woman, says Abel. He is right Chol, my dad did kill his wife Martha, says Marcus. No, I am sure of it. She would spend days trying to come up with a spell to help her remember her life before this which Raven had attacked her trying to kill her. I say. Raven? My dear God it was Raven who told us Alistair Crane had killed Martha. You mean to tell me my wife has been alive all these years not knowing who she was? Yes, but now I am afraid she is deceased. My uncle Victor Quinn had rogues kill my parents and our entire pack three months back. He was even trying to kill me as well. That is how I came to meeting my mate. By running for my life, I told him. All this time, all these years my beloved was alive and well with no memory of us, and we blamed the wrong man for her death. Abel slams his fist down on his desk. Then that would mean my mother was murdered for nothing, our family ripped apart for nothing, said Damien. Who is this Raven? Raven was Martha's own sister, says Abel. Where is this Raven now? asked Marcus. She is the leading cause of all this. My wife's sister has not been seen since informing us of Martha's death seven years ago, said Abel said. After a few more hours of discussing the events and everyone again making sure I am okay we get ready to leave Abel's coven. I walked up to Abel and hug him. Thank you for helping me, keeping me safe and returning me to my mate, I said. My pleasure feisty one, never lose that, he smiles. King Abel thank you again, we will be in touch soon, says Marcus. King Abel, you have my gratitude as well for helping Chloe, she is like a daughter to me. Says Alpha Brooks. It is nice to know not all vampires are horrible beings and we can coexist. Indeed, says Abel. We wave goodbye and head home. Penny, Penelope. I need mother's spell books. I must make all of them pay for taking my mother and now the man I love from me. You should have been on my side, father, you should have given me the books. Then perhaps I can help you. I turn around, and standing there is. Aunt Raven? I run and embrace her, where have you been? It has been years since we last seen you, I say. I have been living in the mountains, but I have been keeping a close eye on you my dear, and with my training child. You can get the justice which you seek, says Raven. You're willing to train me, Aunt Raven? Even the dark arts? I ask her. Of course, my child, the darker the better, I try to teach your mother, she but she did not want to deal with the dark side. She was too weak and scared, but you, you I feel the darkness in. Come with me to the mountains, I will train you, and when you are ready, and the time is right we will get your justice, Raven says with a smile. I take the hand of my smiling aunt. Let us begin, says Raven. King Abel. If Chloe is right and Martha was alive, then Raven is the cause of all this. You called for me, my father. Bowed, a male vampire. Yes Solomon, I have been given some information, I will need you and five others to head to the old Opal Moon territory. Find any evidence to prove my wife had been living there. 
I tell him. Yes, my father. Says Solomon. Also see if anyone knows the whereabouts of Raven Miller. You have explaining to do Raven. Chapter 29 Chloe For the past two days Marcus has refused to leave my side if he must he has Alex shadow me around. I am heading to the hospital to see if there is any change with Alistair, Afternoon, Luna, and Beta. The nurse behind the desk greets us. Afternoon, is there any change in Alistair Crane today? I ask, no, I am sorry, Luna, no change, the nurse says. Oh, well, I am just going to pop in and sit with him for a while if that is all right? I ask her. Certainly, Luna, she responded, Alex, there is no reason you have to sit with me in the room, I will be fine, I said. Go ahead and do what you need to do, I will mind link you when I am ready to leave here okay. You know I am not supposed to leave your side Luna, said Alex. Marcus will kill me. It is fine, Alex, I will deal with Marcus, I told him. After a couple, more minutes of arguing with Alex to leave, he finally gives in and leaves. I as watch as he exits the hospital before I turn back to the nurse. Sorry to bother you, but could you please ask a doctor to come see me? I asked. Oh, are you all right, Luna? I am not sure I just do not feel myself at the moment, I answered. Come with me Luna, I will inform the doctor, right away. She speaks. Thank you, I said following her into a room. Moments later the door opens and the doctor walks in. Afternoon Luna, I hear you are not feeling well, the doctor asks me. Since the night of my wedding ceremony when I was knocked out and taken, I have been having a lot of headaches and dizzy spells, I tell her. Okay, well let us run some tests and blood work and see what is going on with you, shall we? She says. After 30 minutes of tests and blood work, I am heading down to Alistair's room to check on him while I wait for the doctor to give me my results of the tests. I am sitting in the chair next to his bed playing a game on my phone when I hear a voice. Where am I? Oh my god. He is awake. Alistair, sir, please calm down, you are just in the hospital, I tell him. Who, are you? He asks me, you look familiar. My name is Chloe, I am your son Marcus's mate and wife, I tell him. His, mate and wife? He speaks. How is that possible? He just turned 18 three days ago, when did he meet you and have the time to marry you? Where is my wife? Oh no, he thinks it is still six years ago and his wife is still alive. I better mind Link Marcus. Alistair, sir. Marcus is on his way, he can answer all your questions for you, I said. Why can you not answer my questions? Where is my wife? Why am I in the hospital? What is the last thing you remember, Alistair? I ask, sir, what is the last thing you do remember? I ask him. I remember little Penelope Saxon and I were in my office having a conversation. I just can't remember about what it was about now, then I am waking up here, why? What are you not telling me? At that moment Marcus entered the room. Thank God. Marcus, is that you? How did your hair get so long and you have a goatee? But how can that be I was just with you this morning my son? Says Alistair. He does not remember a thing, I said. The door opens again, walks Damien in. You do not remember anything Alistair? Marcus asks. What did you just call me, boy? I believe I called you, Alistair, said Marcus. How dare you disrespect me, boy? Listen Alistair, Damien and I have not had a thing to do with you for six years now, says Marcus. Oh, what nonsense boy, speaking of Damien, where is that boy is he with his mother? 
Alistair asks, not believing Marcus. No, I am right here, old man. Says Damien stepping forward. You're not my son, Damien is 14 years old, Alistair says. You're a grown man. Damien laughs. Nope sorry, I am Damien Alistair, whether you like it or not. I sit on the bed next to Alistair and take his hand in mine. He gives me a weird confusing look. Alistair things are not how you remember them to be, because what you remember happened six years ago, I tell him. What? That is insane, I think I would know if six years has passed by he says. Alistair, there is a reason you do not remember the last six years. Marcus comes and stands behind me placing his hand on my shoulder for support, I do not even know this man, and here I am the one about to break it to this man what has taken place in the last six years. That day in your office with Penny, I said begging. The reason you do not remember what your conversation was about was because, Penny is not a werewolf, she is in fact a witch, one who was practicing the dark magic. I continue to explain everything to Alistair as Damien and Marcus listen in, not once saying a word. When I was through you could see the hurt in his eyes, then realization hits him. I remember, I remember killing Victoria, I couldn't stop myself. I tried to fight myself and stop. Dear God, I did not want to kill my wife. I loved her. I tried. I tried so hard not to, but I could not stop, he says. Oh, I remember the hurt and hate in your eyes, Marcus. You fought me and won taking over as Alpha, then banished me from my home. As the memories came flooding back to Alistair, he became unstable. Damien had to get the doctor to sedate him. The memory of watching himself kill his mate and unable to stop himself pushed him over the edge, that was heartbreaking, I said. He was forced to watch his body kill his wife and there was nothing he could do to stop it. I said a tear flowing down my cheek. Do you have any idea what that is going to do to him? For six long years I blamed and hated this man for killing my mother. How do you just expect me to forget what I saw him do to my mother and stop all this hate I have for this man, says Marcus. I may know now he was under a witch's spell, but Chloe, I saw him kill my mother, I hate him, said Marcus. You asked if I have any idea what this is going to do to him, but do you have any idea what seeing him kill her has done to me? I pulled Marcus into a hug. I am sorry my love, but maybe with what we know, now one day you all can forgive one another, I said. Marcus pulls away from me, I am not sure I can ever get over what I saw and forgive him Chloe, spell or not it all is burned into me right here. He says pointing to his heart. I know Marcus, but life has given you a second chance to love and have your father in your life, you have to at least try to forgive him. Not all of us get a second chance with our parents, I said. Salomon. Spread out brothers, look for any evidence that Mother Martha Saxon lived on this land. It did not take long to find a shop on the territory filled full of spells, herbs, candles, and other things. By the faint order I could tell Martha owned the shop. What are you doing here? Get out, leave you have no business here. I heard a voice behind me. I turn around and standing there is a beautiful woman with black hair and green eyes. I sniff. Mother Martha? I ask, how do you know, my name, she asks. How is it you are still, alive? This pack was attacked and wiped out by rogues. I spoke. I am well aware of what happened to my pack. I just so happened to be out picking herbs that morning, when I returned, I found the devastation of what took place here, she says. You never answered my question sir, how do you know my name? My name is Solomon, your husband Abel Saxon is my sire, he has sent me here to find any sign of you my dear. Husband? I do not have a husband. She speaks. At least, I do not remember having a husband. Please allow me to take you to him, perhaps your memories will return. I tell her. 
I do not know, I do not know you, how can I trust you or what you say? She asks, that is a risk you will need to take ma'am, but you have my word that no harm shall come to you. I tell her. King Abel. I am sitting in my study trying to read, I have read the same line six times already now, it is hopeless. I closed the book. I hope Solomon finds something, anything about my dear Martha. I get to my feet to pour myself a glass of blood. Then go gaze out the window. I can that Solomon's car is parked in the courtyard, he has returned. Ah, there you are, father, says Solomon. I turn around to face him. Tell me, have you found anything? Any scent or indication she had been alive living there the past seven years, I ask. Yes, father, I have. Solomon moves to the side and in steps. Martha. Chloe. The past two days have been hard on Alistair and the boys. He was released from the hospital and has been staying on the alpha floor with us. Marcus is finding it extremely hard to be in the same room as Alistair. I am hoping one day things can be mended between them. Damien and Brooke were supposed to leave for college in six days but took off back yesterday. Damien could not deal with his father being around and had to leave. The doctor has just called me asking for me to see her. My test results are back. So, I am heading over there now to see her. Afternoon Luna, the doctor is waiting for you, said the nurse at the front desk. Thank you, I say walk into the room the nurse points out to me. A moment later the doctor walks in. Hello, Luna, thank you for coming in. She says. I reviewed your test's results, and everything looks good. I believe the headaches are due to the concussion you sustained from the blow to your head, and it not being treated. She speaks. Just get plenty of rest and take it easy for a couple of days, and it should subside, if not come back and see me. Said the doctor. So, there is nothing to worry about then, I asked. Nothing serious I need to worry about? From the results no, there is nothing to worry about. But you can get some painkillers at the front for your headache to help when you leave, she says. Okay, thank you doctor, makes me feel better. I spoke. I head back to the pack house when I notice Alistair sitting alone in the garden. I head over to where he is sitting. Afternoon Alistair, how are you feeling today? I ask him. Oh Chloe, hello. I am still adjusting and dealing with everything I have done, my sons hate me, my mate is dead. I take a seat next to him and take his hand in mine. I am sorry this has all happened to you and your family, you are not alone, and I have faith that one day things will get better between you and your sons. We just can't give up, I say. My son is a lucky man to have a mate like you, Alistair says. I hope he knows that and never takes your for granted. I think I am going to have a little nap now, I am after all an old man now. He says, with a little laugh. I walk him to his room then head off to find Marcus. I walk into his office. And find him on the phone. I take a seat and wait for him to finish. It only takes a couple minutes before he is saying goodbye and see you tomorrow. Hello, my love, Marcus says, getting to his feet coming around the desk to kiss me. Are you going somewhere, tomorrow? I ask him, oh no, that was Abel on the phone he will be coming here tomorrow to talk to us. He speaks. Oh good, it will be nice to see him again. I spoke. In the meantime, I have two hours before my next meeting, I think we should fill that gap. He says to me kissing my neck. Mmm, I moan what do you have in mind Alpha? I giggle. Before I knew it, I was tossed on the couch in his office, and he was removing my clothes. Chapter 30 Chloe The gatehouse has just linked me babe, Abel is here, Marcus tells me. I join Marcus outside to greet Abel. 
King Abel, welcome it is a pleasure to see you again. Marcus greets him. Thank you, Alpha Marcus, greetings Luna Feisty, it is a pleasure to see you again as well, says Abel. I laugh at the name he has called me. Hello, Abel, it is nice to see you as well, I said. Wait. I said sniffing the air. It cannot be, I said. Chloe, dear, what is it? Marcus asked. I noticed a smile on Abel's face. Martha? I asked. A black-haired woman steps out of the car. Oh my God, Martha it is you, I said. Chloe? You're alive? Said, Martha shocked. How are you alive, Martha? I thought the whole pack was murdered, I said. I had left the early that morning to go pick more herbs I needed, when I returned that night, I found the territory destroyed and on fire, there were rogues everywhere so I hid, said Martha. I thought everyone was dead as well, oh Chloe, I am so sorry I was not there to help everyone. She speaks. I was not there either, I left early myself and returned to find them all dead, I said. Martha embraces me in a hug. Please, let us take this up to my office, Marcus says. Once in office, Martha speaks. Abel's men found me a couple days ago in my shop, you know. Chloe, when your father found and took me in, I remembered nothing of who I was. Abel has given me my books, I used a spell to regain my memory, I remember everything. Martha says. I remember my sister Raven was in love with a werewolf but she said he never noticed her. He ignored her one day when she approached him asking him to prom, she said he laughed at her and walked away, she was furious. Embarrassed, she came to me asking for help in getting even with him, I refused. That is when she attacked me, she said I failed her like everyone else. Who was this werewolf who made her so bitter? I asked, she did not give me his name, just that she wanted revenge, is had always been interested in the dark magic. I am sure she is very skilled in the dark magic now. She started reading into dark magic at the age of 10 she begged me to join her, but I turned her down, told her it was not something to mess with anyway, I was already a wife and mother when she asked me for help getting her revenge. When I told her to grow up, and move on the boy was not worth it, it infuriated her. That is when she attacked me using dark magic on me, that is all I remember till your father found, and took me in. She tells us. Raven took my wife away from me for six years, all over something so juvenile, she ruined my family. I disowned my own daughter because she wanted revenge on the wolves for killing her mother, said Abel. She also cost me my mother and father, said Marcus. All this, because someone laughed at her? I placed my hand on Marcus to calm him down, only he was not calming down and moved away from my touch. Where is she, now? Asked a furious, Marcus. We are not sure Alpha Marcus, but I have my men looking for her as we speak. You should know we believe our daughter Penny is with her as well, said Abel. I believe since she framed your father Alpha Marcus, the wolf has to be part of your pack. We also believe we haven't seen the end of her revenge or pennies, says Martha. Raven. N.O., 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 you are not doing it right. If you want to master the dark magic you have to be exactly right, I tell her. I am trying, I just want to learn fast and get Alistair back, said Penny. Foolish child, dark magic or any magic for that matter is not something you learn fast. Now, concentrate, you fool and try again. This is going to take longer than I hoped, but once she has it all down, we will get our revenge. Then no one will ever cross me again. A month later and there is still no sign of Raven or Penny. Abel calls once a week with updates, but so far there is nothing really to report. Now Marcus is out for a run with Alistair. They are trying to gain a bond again, but it is going slow. I am just leaving the hospital after doing some more tests, I have not been feeling well again. Hey Luna, how you are doing? 
Harper, I said running to give her a hug. What are you doing here? I asked her. What? I need a reason to visit my best friend. Harper says, of course not, it is so good to see you. How, is your father? I ask. He is good, he is also here as well, he has a meeting with Marcus. Harper says. Ah see, you do have a reason for being here. I laugh. We walk towards the pack house catching up with one another, when I see Alex talking to Alpha Brooks, Papa Richard, I yell running to him, Harper laughing behind me. Chloe, my dear, how have you been? He asks pulling me into a hug. Other than these dizzy spells and headaches I am rather good, how are you? I ask. He puts his arms around both Harper and me, now that I am with both my girls, I am one happy man, he says. Since Alpha Brooks filled in as my father walking me down the aisle at my wedding, we have become close. He calls me twice a week to see how I am doing and if I need anything. It is nice having a father figure in my life again, he means so much to me. And even though Harper first started out being a bitch towards me and was Marcus's lover, we have became best friends, like sisters. Alex, have you informed Marcus Alpha Brooks is here? I asked him. Yes, Luna, he is on his way, answered Alex. I am a bit early, dear. Harper could not wait any longer to see you, said Alpha Brooks. Well, then if Harper and I are not needed in this meeting then I say we hit the pool, I said. Are you crazy, girl? It is the middle of October it is cold out here, said Harper. No, I am not crazy, I am talking about the inside pool silly, I said. What? What inside pool? Asked, Harper. The one I had installed weeks ago, so I can still swim in the winter, I said. Hell yeah, let's go. Harper says heading for the house. Three hours later, Harper and I are heading to the kitchen for lunch when my phone goes off. Oh, you go ahead, Harper, I will meet you there in a moment. I have to take this, I tell her. Hello? Hello Luna, this is Dr. Hardy. Hello, doctor, what can I do for you? I ask. I am calling about your test results, Luna. She speaks. I was not expecting to get them back so soon. Oh already, I thought it would take a couple days. I spoke. So, what is it doctor, is something wrong with me? No, nothing is wrong with you Luna, you're extremely healthy, but you are also pregnant Luna, she says. I was speechless, was I hearing her right? Hello, Luna are you still there? Did you hear me? Ah, yes, I am still here, I said. Pregnant? Are you sure? Yes, Luna, I am positive I ran the test twice myself, the doctor says. Wow, um, thank you, doctor. Luna, are you okay? Did you need to talk to someone? No, I am fine, it is just after the first pregnancy and the miscarriage I guess I am just a little in shock and a little scared. I speak. That is perfectly understandable Luna, I would suggest talking to your therapist, it will help you with this. Okay yes I will, thank you, doctor. You're welcome Luna, my door is always open, and congratulations Luna. I will have my nurse book an appointment for later this week. Okay, thank you. End of call. I walk over to the chair in the corner and sit down. I am pregnant. I am pregnant, fear starts to take over my mind. I am still not fully over the miscarriage. And now here I am pregnant, I am getting another chance to become a mother, but then what if I lose this one too? Will Marcus leave me this time? Do I even tell him I am pregnant? Should I wait? I do not know what to do. I hear voices coming down the stairs. One of them is Marcus. I cannot breathe. I must get out of here. Hello, Chloe, my love. 
says Marcus. I looked up at him. Chloe, what is it? You are shaking and pale honey. What happened? Asked Marcus. I noticed Alex and Alpha Brooks standing there looking at waiting for me to answer. Can we talk alone, please Marcus? I ask, of course, honey let us walk to the garden, said Marcus. Excuse us gentlemen, said Marcus, then he wraps his arm around my waist and leads me out to the garden. When we reach the garden, we take a seat on the bench. Chloe honey you're worrying me, has something happened? Kind of Marcus, I just. You just, what? Chloe. You know how I have not been feeling well? Yes, are the headaches getting worse? He asks. I went to see the doctor today. I just got off the phone with her just now, she did some tests on me, I thought it would be a couple days for the results to come in, but she just called me with the results of my tests. Okay, what did she tell you, is there something seriously wrong with you? No, she told me, she told me. Chloe, what is it? What is wrong with you? A couple minutes of silence. Chloe, what did she say? She said, I am pregnant. Chapter 31 Alpha Marcus Chol is scaring me, what could possible be wrong with her, she is having trouble telling me. Chloe, what is it? You are scaring me, what is wrong with you? There is a couple more moments of silence. Chloe, what did she say? I ask her again. She said, I'm pregnant. She finally answers. I get to my feet, not sure I heard right. What? She said I am pregnant Marcus, said Chloe. Oh, my God. I am going to be a father? You're really pregnant, love? Chloe's head falls to her knees, her hands over her eyes, she is crying. Why is she crying? This should be happy news. Chloe, sweetheart, what is it? I ask her. Why are you crying? I sit back down next to her and pull her into my arms. Baby talk to me, I thought you would be happy to be carrying our pup, I said. I am Marcus, she says, lifting her head to look at me. It is just, I had a miscarriage with our first pup, I still ache for my baby. I am scared Marcus, I am afraid I might lose this baby as well, Chloe says. Oh, Chol baby, I am sorry, I was not thinking about how this would affect you, I am sorry, I tell her. But you're not alone in this Chloe, I will he right beside you every step of the way, together we will protect this pup, I tell her. That sounds nice Marcus, but I cannot help thinking about Raven and Penny. What if they decide they're going to attack while I am carrying our pup? What if rogues attack our pack? What if? Whoa, 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 baby calm down, you cannot live your life by what ifs. It is not healthy to live that way, I tell her. You cannot stress yourself out, it is not good for the baby or yourself, this is a good thing Chol, we are having a baby, we should be celebrating baby. You are right, I am sorry Marcus, she says. I am extremely happy I am pregnant with our pup, I really am, but at the same time I just cannot help having theses fears. I get that, I do my love, and you have a right to have your fears, but we need to fix and work together on your fears. Stress is not good for the baby, I say. I know, the doctor wants me to see the therapist again to help, she says. Then I agree you should talk with her, and you have me and the pack beside you. I promise I will not allow anything to happen to you or our pup, you have my word. We sit and talk a little while longer, I am trying to help ease the fears Chloe has. There must be something I can do to help her move past the miscarriage and move forward. Well, baby, what do you think? Should we go and announce to the family we are having a pup? I ask her. She looks at me and smiles. Yes, you have made me feel better, let us go share our good news with our loved ones, she says. 
I place my head on her forehead. Baby I love you so much, you are the strongest woman I know, I tell her. I am clearly the luckiest man alive to have you as my mate and the mother of my pup, I am so happy we're having a baby. I love you to baby, I would not want any other mate or have this baby with anyone else. She says, I kiss her sweet lips, take her hand in mine and head back to the house to inform everyone of our news. Entering the dining room everyone is enjoying their lunch. I clear my throat to get everyone's attention, the room becomes quiet as all heads turn to Chloe and me. If we could have everyone's attention, please, the Luna and I have an announcement to make. The Luna has been informed that. I look towards Chloe. The Alpha and I are having a pup, Chloe announced. The room erupted in whistles and cheers. Harper runs to Chloe hugging her, I am going to be an auntie, congratulations. Says a happy Harper. Congratulations, Marcus, this is wonderful news. Says Alpha Brooks extending his hand to me. Thank you, Richard, I shake his hand. Oh, my dear Chloe, I am so happy for you, this is great news sweetheart, embrace it, says Richard hugging Chloe. So. I am going to be a grandfather. I look behind me to see Alistair standing in the doorway. Congratulations, son, uh, Chloe, I am extremely happy for you both, Alistair says then walks out. Go after him, Marcus. Chloe tells me. You know the truth now, you cannot keep punishing your father way for something Penny forced him to do under a spell. I kiss Chol then take off after Alistair. Chloe. We're going to have so much fun, baby shopping. Says Harper. I giggle at her. Shopping can wait a while, right now I am starving let's eat, I say. I watch everyone take their seats, and resume eating, everyone is happy about the news of the baby and just gossiping away. I hope Marcus is right and everything will be all right this time. I really do want this baby, more than anything I want this baby. As I take my seat, Richard leans over me whispering. I see the stress and worry on your face my dear, I know you are afraid because of last time, but you need to remember you did not know you were with a child when you fought your uncle, you are not fighting anyone now. This is not the same situation as last time my dear, like I said my child embraces your pregnancy. Be happy this is a wonderful thing. Thank you, Richard. I said, hugging him. Our father is right, Chloe, said a smiling Harper. Yes, yes I am, now eaten both of you, this grandfather here needs to return home soon, you know, and you need to feed my grandbaby, said Richard. How did I get so lucky to be accepted as family by them? Instead of a brother, I have a sister and a father figure in my life. My baby is going to be loved so much, just like I am. I am so glad and grateful to be a part of their family. I dig into my food feeling better about everything, I know as long as I have my new family, Pack, and Marcus by my side, me and the baby are going to be just fine. After lunch Harper and Alpha Brooks head off home. I was standing on the back deck looking out at the mountains off in the distance, it looks so beautiful with the snow-covered tops. I take one last breath of the crisp air then head back inside. I can hear the teen wolves laughing and playing video games in the living room, so I head up to my bedroom. Entering my room I close the door, to block out the noise of the teens playing. Thank God for soundproof rooms. I go take a quick shower. Go put on a pair of jogging pants and hoodie and sit down in front of my TV turning on a movie. I do not really pay attention to the movie because I have other things running through my head. I about jump out of my skin when someone touches my arm. Whoa, sorry baby I did not mean to scare you, I had called your name but you didn't answer me. Says, Marcus. Sorry my mind is somewhere else, did not hear you, I said. Marcus sits down next to me, taking my hand in his. What is on your beautiful mind, baby, he asks. 
Well, the pack house is always so crowded and loud, in seven months we are go to be having a baby, I say. I was just thinking about having my own home. What would you say to us building our own house behind the pack house out back near the lake with a magnificent view of the mountains, just for us and our pup? I mean, we would still join the back down here and do our Alpha Luna duties and stuff it's just. Marcus placed his fingers on my lips to silence me. Baby, I think that is a wonderful idea. He speaks. I will call around for good contractors and have them start on it right away. Then by Christmas we can move into our own home way before the baby comes, he said. I throw myself on top of him. Thank you, thank you, thank you, I said, kissing him. Mm, if kisses is my reward for giving you a house, what else can I do for you to get more of them kisses or perhaps more? He asks, I giggle. How about you go make that call, then bring back some strawberries and whipped cream, I said. I burst out laughing as Marcus flips me off him and runs out the door to make that call. I do not think I ever saw him move that fast before. Twenty minutes later my alpha was back with strawberries and whipped cream. Oh, what the rest of the day we had. Chapter 32 Chloe Finishing my Luna duties, I decide to head into town to get candy for the trick-or-treaters tonight. I love Halloween, Christmas and Halloween are the best holidays ever. This will be the pack's first time taking part in Halloween and trick-or-treating. The children are excited to be taking part this year. I am excited to see what the kids have all picked out for costumes. Filling my cart with bags of candy, chips, and stickers, I decide to also start filling the cart with scary and fun decorations. The warrior Greg Marcus has shadowing me when I leave the pack house without him is giggling behind me. What? I ask him with a smile. It is just nice to have a Luna who is bringing something new to our pack for the pups. Watching you get so excited over the decorations is just priceless. He laughs. I am so glad I am the one who must protect my Luna, he smiles. Good cause we need another cart, this one is full. I tell him. He rushes off and returns a moment later with another cart he is more than happy to help me fill it. Do you have any pups warrior Greg? I ask. Yes, I do Luna, I have a six-year-old son and a four-year-old daughter, he says. Are you going to be taking them out tonight then? I ask. Of course, Luna they are so excited for tonight, we have always heard of Halloween, but our Alpha has never allowed us to partake in it till you Luna, he says. Well as long as I am the Luna, Halloween and Christmas are going to happen in this pack, and in a big way, I tell him. Did your pups pick out their own costumes? My wife took them yesterday, they wanted to sleep in them they're so excited, he said. We both laugh. My wife has even bought matching costumes for us to wear while we take them out, something we wish we could have done as children. Now we get a chance to. Oh. That is so exciting I am extremely happy that the children and yourselves are all excited about this, I said. We finish the shopping and head back to the pack house to decorate the outside and inside the house. It was so nice to have so many fathers, mothers, warriors, and omegas all there ready waiting and wanting to help decorate when we returned. Hours later we all stand back to admire all our hard work when the door opens, and in walks Marcus and Alex. Wow, Halloween threw up in here too, said Alex. Looking around the room. It is not just the outside all decorated to the extreme. It looks great, everyone says Marcus. Well done, like all of you I was never allowed to take part in Halloween before, my father would not allow it. But I am looking forward to seeing the pack and all our pups happy, excited and out trick or treating have a fun time. I walk over and kiss Marcus. I am so glad you are excited as well my alpha, Halloween is loads of fun, I said. Alpha Marcus, says a warrior. Yes, Devin, what can I do for you? 
I asked Marcus, this was found on the east border, it's addressed to you Alpha, he says as he hands Marcus the envelope. Anyone see, anyone? Or smell anything? Marcus asked. No, Alpha, it was found nailed to a tree. Very well, thank you, Devin. Said Marcus. Devin bows, then hurries out the door. What is it, Marcus? I ask, I am not sure, I will open it later, he says. Please open it now, Marcus, I say. Dear I can do it later in my office, right now we are getting ready for the pups to arrive for their treats, he says. No Marcus, it is an envelope found on our borders, open it now, there could be trouble, I said, okay, okay, fine, Marcus says opening the envelope. If you think it's overthink again, soon very soon I will finish what we started. It is not signed, I said. Who could it be from? I am thinking it is Raven and Penny, letting us know they are still out there, said Marcus. I see Marcus's eyes gloss over as he mind links with someone. I just had security doubled, he says. I do not want anything to ruin tonight. You think they might attack, tonight? I ask, no, but I am not taking any chances either, he says putting his arm around me. Marcus and I head up to our room to put on our costumes, Marcus is going to be Dracula, and I will be his vampire bride. We even got Alex to agree to play Van Helsing. Children's smiles and laughter fill the pack house as they come for their treats before hitting the other pack members' homes. As much as I was enjoying myself, I could not help but think about that letter. By 9 p.m. all the kids were done trick or treating and tucked away in bed. While their nanny or grandparents look over them, the rest of the adults were in the ballroom for the Halloween party. The costumes were unreal, Marcus and I had to pick the best custom for the grand prize. We both were having a tough time cause these costumes were great. By the end of the night, we decided on the guy dressed as the horror movie charter pumpkin head. He looked so real. As the last of the pack members leave, I head up to take a shower. I find Marcus lying on the bed already snoring by the time I finish my shower. I smile and pull the blankets over him. I head down to the kitchen for tea. Good evening, Luna, is there something I can get you before I turn in? Ask the head Omega, Wendy. No Wendy thank you though. I am just going to make myself a cup of tea. All right, Luna, good night, she bows before taking her leave. Adding a little sugar to my tea I head out to the front porch to enjoy it in the October crisp air. Fifteen minutes later I drop my cup, it shatters on the porch, the smell of rotting flesh, and stale blood fills my nose. Rogues. I quickly mind Link Marcus only he is not answering me, I try Alex. He answers right away. Get inside now, Luna, I am on my way. Alex says, I turn to head back inside, but it is blocked by a big gray wolf. He is a rogue. I slowly back up, but he steps forward growling at me. I need to stall this mutt till Alex gets here. What are you doing here? What do you want? I ask the rogue. He grows louder. Shift now, I order the wolf. Another rogue appears to my right. I said shift, I repeated to him. Hurry up Alex. I do not know how long I can hold them off. Both rogues take a step towards me. I was thinking of shifting to face them, but then I remember I cannot shift I am pregnant. I place my hands on my stomach. The gray wolf's eyes fall to where my hands are. He licks his lips and lunges at me. I hear a loud growl and a thud. Alex gray and white wolf has tackled the gray wolf before he could tackle me. I hear the growl of the other rouge. This rogue was a female. She circles me, snapping her jaws. Alex is busy fighting the other rogue. More growls and yelps fill the air as our warriors have located the other rogues and were fighting. Where is Marcus? 
The female rouge charges at me, I must dodge left to avoid her teeth. I quickly take off for the front door pushing myself through it and locking it behind me. I have never run from a fight before but being pregnant I cannot risk losing my pup again. I watch as the she-wolf rogue charges towards the front door when a red wolf jumps in front of her taking her down. The red wolf mind links me, Luna quick inside the bunker now, he says, it is warrior Greg. I head for the bunker, push the coat in and step inside hitting the button fast behind me so it closes. When I turned around the bunker is already filled with women and children in fear. Oh, thank God, Luna, you are safe, said a mother. Yes, thanks to Alex and Greg, I was able to make it here, is everyone all right? I ask. We are all fine, Luna, just frightened, the border patrol, warned us all in time. I thought about what the women just said. Why was I never warned about the attack of rogues? What, mind link? I asked, they all look at me weirdly. The mass mind link that warrior Devin sent out, said a woman. I never got any mid link, no warning at all, I said. I was outside having tea when I smelled the rogues and two approached me, I said. Something is not right, why did I not receive the mind link and why can I not get through to Marcus? You all stay here till our men come for you, I said going to the door. Wait Luna, do not go out there, says a woman. You are pregnant it is too dangerous, I beg you please stay here with us Luna it is safe. I have to find the alpha, I said opening the door and slipping out, shut the door, I whispered back to them. Then I slowly make my way up the stairs, to find Marcus. I reach our bedroom and hurry in locking the door behind me. When I turn around there is a woman standing over Marcus, a blue light coming from her hands into Marcus's body. Who are you, I yell. She stops what she was doing and looks up at me. She laughs then in a flash of what light she was gone. I rush to Marcus's side. He was breathing but I could not wake him up. I mind Link Alex for help. Within minutes he is busting through the door, the rogue attack is over, they just stopped fighting and fled, said Alex. Listen, Alex, we need to get Marcus to the hospital now. I spoke. Alex picks up Marcus taking off towards the infirmary with me right on his heels. Raven. Well, did it work, Penny asked me when I made it back to our hideout. That stupid Luna showed up in the middle of my spell, I just what I did was enough. I guess, we will soon find out, either way we have more work to do. Chapter 33 Chloe A week ago Alex and I rushed Marcus into the hospital after I had found a woman standing over him with some kind of blue light, coming from her hands. The doctors do not have any idea why he has not woken up. They say his vitals and all his tests have all come back normal. They cannot find a thing wrong with him to explain why he will not wake up. I sit by his bedside day and night praying to the moon goddess he will wake up and be all right. I refuse to leave his side so at night the nurses give me a bed to sleep in next to him. Alex has been an immense help with the pack. He has stepped up his beta duties and is keeping up with the alpha duties while I stay with Marcus. I look up as the nurse enters the room to check Marcus's vitals again. Is there anything I can get for you, Luna? She asks me, they have all been so kind to me. No, I am good thank you. Beta Alex had brought me lunch and some tea already, I said. Very well Luna, just let me know if you need anything please, she says, then exits the room. I must have dozed off because hours later I was startled awake by the nurse coming in again. Luna Chloe look, she says pointing to Marcus. The Alpha is awake, she pushes the button next to his bed to inform the front desk. I shot out of my chair taking his hand. Oh, thank heavens baby, you are finally awake, how do you feel? I ask him, I beg your pardon miss, but you will address me as Alpha Knight not baby. He speaks. What? 
Why would I call you Alpha Knight? I've never called you Alpha Marcus, I said. Miss, I warned you once I will not repeat myself. He speaks. Alpha, says the nurse. Do you not know who this woman is? No, should I? He asked her. I am the Alpha of this pack, I know every member of my pack, and she is not a pack member. I will get the doctor, the nurse says rushing out the door. Mark, Alpha, how can you not remember who I am? I ask. Because we have never met, miss, trust me, I would remember if I ever met someone as beautiful as you, he says. The door swings open and the doctor rushes in. Alpha, it is good to see you finally awake, how are we feeling, she asks him. A bit confused doctor, why am I in the hospital? Alpha, can you tell me what the last thing is you do remember, asked the doctor. I remember being informed there was a single lone she-wolf trespassing on the west border, only we never did find her. She must have moved on quickly, he answers. But that was months ago Alpha, the end of February, it is now November 8th, I said. What? He speaks. You must be mistaken miss, today is February 23rd, said Marcus. Oh my god, that woman, she must have somehow removed his memories from that day forward, I said. You really do not remember me? I have already stated to you, miss, I do not know who you are. He answers annoyed. Alpha Marcus, says, doctor. This woman is Chloe, she is your mate, wife, and our Luna, she tells him. Marcus looks at her then turns to look at me, no, that is a lie, I do not have a mate, and this pack has no Luna. He speaks. Tears form in my eyes, my mate, the love of my life does not even remember me. For thirty minutes the doctor and I have tried to convince Marcus we were indeed mates and married, we even filled him in on what has taken place in the last nine months. But he continues to call us liars still not believing us. Listen, Dr. Hardy, I feel fine if there is nothing wrong with me, I would like to leave now, I have Alpha duties that need my attention, Marcus says. Okay Alpha, but I would like to run an MRI on you sometime in the next couple of days. In the meantime if anything feels weird or you feel unwell, please come back and see me. She told him. I will, just let me know when you need to do the MRI, he says as he is getting out of bed. Once he is on his feet, he says his goodbye to the doctor and leaves. I am sorry my Luna, the doctor says. I really do not know what to say, I will do my best to figure out why he has no memories of you or the last nine months. Thank you Dr. Hardy. I said, I gather my things and head back to the pack house. Everyone is buzzing about the Alpha. I can tell by the pity looks on their faces they were giving me they all know about the Alpha's condition. I head up to the office, I am hoping Marcus will talk with me. When I reach his office, the door is wide open, I am telling you Marcus Chloe is your mate and wife, says Alex. That is not possible Alex I feel nothing towards her, sure she I beautiful, but there is no mate bond there, and all this mumbo jumbo stuff of it being November and everything there is just no way, says Marcus. It is true man all of it, said Alex. Have I ever lied to you before man? I head to our bedroom pull out our wedding album, take our wedding picture off the dresser and head back to the office. I walk right in like I normally always do. How dare you enter the Alpha's office without knocking, Marcus yelled at me. Alpha, she is the Luna she has never had to knock, says Alex. Marcus pounds his fist on the desk. She is not the Luna, I do not even know who she is, he yelled. Marcus here, I said handing him the photo in the frame. He takes it. What the hell is this? He speaks. It is our favorite wedding picture, Marcus, we had an extra copy made and framed. I spoke. He looks at the picture then over at Alex and me. I smile at him. Nice try, he says. 
I am an alpha, I am not stupid, I can tell this photo is fake. He throws the picture across the room, the frame smashes. How could you do that? I asked. Easy, he says, it is a fake. IT is not a fake, we are mates and we are married. I yelled at him. Listen Chloe, was it? I am sure you are a genuinely nice woman and all, but I am just not your mate or husband, and you definitely are not the Luna, I am just not into you, okay? So please enough with all of this, I do not want to hear another word about it, he said. I pick up the photo album and walk out. Chloe wait, says Alex. No, it is fine Alex the alpha dose not want to hear anymore. I spoke. Oh, and Alpha, I said without turning back around. Shall I have my things removed from our, I mean your bedroom as well? Why is your stuff in my room to begin with? He asks. Because as we are trying to tell you, she is your mate and wife, Alex said. Just, stop, enough already, yes, please remove your belongs. Wait, do you not belong to your own pack, he asks. She belongs to this pack. Says, Alex. My father was Corvin Slater of the Opal Moon Pack, I said and walked out. I mind-linked the head Omega Wendy and asked her to have someone remove my belongings and place them all into my camper. I will stay in this house. Alpha Marcus. We have to figure out what the hell happened to you, man, said Alex. Nothing has happened to me Alex get ready to go to the meeting with Alpha Peterson. Oh my god look Marcus look at your computer your phone anything just look at the date. It is not May 23rd anymore it is November 8th, said Alex. I open my phone, November 8th, look at my computer screen it says the same. What is going on? I see you're confused Marcus, here look at all the work that has been done, look at the dates, says Alex. Look at the handwriting, the signature, they are yours Marcus. An hour of Alex going over things and showing me things, I am more confused than ever. If it really is November 8th, why can I not remember the last nine months? Chloe. A week a whole week and he still does not remember a thing. The pack remains calling me Luna and I continue to do my duties without Marcus knowing. I am afraid what he might do if he were to find out. He has removed me from the Luna chair in the dining hall and has placed me at the Omega's table. He stopped being mean and rude to me for the most part when we cross each other's path, he would say hello and ask how my day was, but he never acknowledged me once as his mate or wife. He did not even know I was carrying his pup. I had asked everyone not to tell him about the pup because of the circumstances. Miss Slater, may I have a moment of your time, please? Marcus asks me. I get to my feet, I was hopeful there was a memory of me he remembered. Yes, Alpha. I ask. Please follow me to my office, he says. I follow him up. Once inside, he asks me to take a seat. Miss Slater, Chloe, I know you and everyone believes we are mates and married, he says. That is because we are, I say. Then tell me something, why have we not marked each other? He asks. What? Marcus, what are you talking about? I ask. We did mark each other, I said. Then why do I not have a mark on my neck? He gets to his feet leaning across the desk and moves my hair to the side. And look at that, not a mark on you either, he says. Marcus, are you blind? Our marks are as plain as the day, I said touching mine. That is Alpha Marcus Miss Slater, and I see no mark, he says. What is going on? How can he not see our marks? I like you Chloe I do, you are a wonderful woman but the games need to stop now, we are not mates. Whoever your mate is, is a lucky man, but I am sorry it is not me. He speaks. I am not playing any games, you are my mate and my husband Marcus. Have you spoken to your father? 
I asked him, yes, and I have had him removed from my territory. I do not believe him or anyone about a witch making him do it. I hate him, and he is gone, says Marcus. Wow okay, I say. Like I said Chloe, you're beautiful you are a lovely lady I have no ill thoughts towards you, but it needs to stop now understand? Or just as I did Alistair I will have you removed as well. My heart is breaking, I love this man so much, how can I get through to him? Do you understand, Miss Slater? Before I could answer there was a knock at the door. Come in. Says, Marcus. The door opens, and in walks Harper. Harper my love it is good to see you, there is something I said to you the last time you were here I would like to discuss with you, he says to her before walking over giving her a light kiss and pulling her over to his chair and into his lap. Tears form in my eyes, Harper looks at me confused then pusses herself from Marcus. Marcus, what the hell do you think you are doing? She asked him, my sister, my best friend, your mate and wife is sitting right there, and you pull that shit? Oh, great another one. Christ, says Marcus. Listen Alpha to answer your question, yes I understand, Harper we need to talk, I said. May we leave, Alpha? I ask. Yes. But Harper, I want to talk to you later. He speaks. I grab a hold of Harper's arm and pull her out with me. When we reach the main entranceway Alex and Alpha Brooks are standing there talking. What hell was all that, Chloe? Asked, Harper. Daddy you will not believe this, Marcus kissed me and pulled me into his lap right in front of Chloe, she said. Harper says Alex come here, let me explain. As he pulled her aside, I break down crying, the pain in my chest from the kiss was still hurting, Nikita was still whimpering in my head. Come here, my dear, said Alpha Brooks, pulling me into a hug. Alex told me everything, I am so sorry. He speaks. I cried in his arms, just letting him hold me, I needed to be held. Oh my god, said Harper, who then rushed to my side hugging me as well. Do not worry, sister, nothing is going to happen with Marcus and I, she says. I know I trust you, Harper. I speak. What is going on, here? We look towards the stars and see Marcus standing there looking at us. I was just saying hello to my foster daughter, said Alpha Brooks. Foster, daughter? Marcus asks. Yes. Chloe here is my foster daughter, Alpha Brooks says. Come, Alpha Marcus. Let us have a talk. Says Alpha Brooks. Harper and I spent the day together. I assured her I was not mad at her over what Marcus did. It was not her fault. Two hours later two angry Alpha has come storming down the stairs, come Harper, we are leaving. Said Alpha Brooks. Chloe, my dear, I am so sorry you have to go through this, I am just a phone call away my dear. He says hugging me. Then, I watch as they drive away. I turn around and see Marcus furiously staring at me. A sharp pain shoots through my stomach. I grab my stomach and fall to my knees in pain screaming. Chloe, what is wrong with you? Asks, Marcus. C-H-L-O-E, I yells Alex dropping to my side. Chloe, what is it? There is a horrible pain in my stomach, doctor now. I managed to get out. Alex picks me up bridal style, what is wrong with her Alex? Marcus asked. Not now, Alpha, she needs a doctor. Alex takes off running to the hospital. As the doctor is running an ultrasound Alex stays with me. The pain has stopped for now. Other than my crying and the sound of the doctor clicking away on the machine, the room was silent. Good news Luna, your baby is just fine, no sign of any danger, the doctor says. Oh, thank God, I said. That is great news Chloe, but why did she have the pains doctor? Asks Alex. 
You have been under a tremendous amount of stress Luna, the stress is not good for you or the baby, the doctor says. Baby? She is pregnant? Says Marcus from the door. I had not realized he had come in. Yes, Alpha she is eight weeks pregnant, said the doctor. Marcus turns and storms out of the room. The heart monitor hooked up to me started to beep like crazy. Calm down, Luna. Says the doctor. You need to calm down. Fifteen minutes later I finally managed to calm down. The doctor had to give me something to sleep. I would like to keep her overnight beta to keep a better eye on her, the doctor says. The baby is not in any danger at the moment, but I am afraid if the Luna continues to be under so much stress things might change. We cannot let that happen doctor, she cannot lose another pup, says Alex. She will be out the rest of the night her body needs to rest, said the doctor. Alex. I thank the doctor, kiss the Luna on the forehead and leave. I cannot believe she has to go through all this. I enter the Alpha's office and find Marcus sitting at his desk with his head in his hands. Why, did no one tell me she was pregnant? He asked. Because she had asked us not to. After you woke up and could not remember her or anything about her, and kept pushing her away, she did not want you to know, I said. It is mine, is she carrying my pup? Marcus asked. Yes, Marcus, it is yours. How can I be sure, it is mine? I do not remember a thing, he says. You are not even bothering to remember. You are too busy pushing her away and so determined it is all fake to even try to remember, I said. It is because of you Marcus this happened to her. Is the baby all right, he asks. Where is she now? The doctor gave her something to make her sleep, she has not been sleeping right, because of you she has been under an extreme of stress, she has already had one miscarriage Marcus, the doctor does not want her to have another one, I said. She was pregnant before and lost it? He asked, yes, back in June. Let me guess mine as well. Yes. The Alpha started to laugh. You think it is funny? No, I would never think losing a baby was funny, but this is all lies. The note I received today told me everything I would be told would be a lie. Note, what note? I ask, never mind, it was addressed to me, he said. Look Alex, she seems like a nice woman, but she lies too much, she just wants me because I am the alpha, when she wakes up, I will be asking her to leave my pack and territory. What? No, Marcus, you cannot do that. I can and I will, I will not be lied to or play for a fool, the note made me see the truth. You are the fool, I said. If my Luna losses her baby because of you, I will never forgive you, I say storming out of the office. What is this about a note? I need to find out what was on it? I need to find this note. Chapter 34 Alpha Marcus Sitting at my desk doing work when there is a knock at the door. Come in, I say. Sorry to bother you, Alpha, but may I have a moment of your time? Dr. Hardy, of course, come in, have a seat. I tell her. What can I do for you? Alpha, Marcus as you now know Luna, I mean Chloe is pregnant and had a scare last night brought on by stress. She speaks. She has already suffered one miscarriage in June, I would hate to see her have another one, Dr. Hardy says. Yes, I had been informed about that, it is a tragedy, I say. The Alpha, I know, and respect would never want a woman or cause a woman to have a miscarriage. Of course, not Dr. Hardy, what are you getting at? Beta Alex has informed me you are going to ask Chloe to leave the pack and your territory. That is correct, she needs to move on, these games and lies of hers have gone on long enough. She is to leave once you release her, I tell her. I beg you Alpha not to do that, 
She needs to be seen by me regularly during her high-risk pregnancy. I am afraid another blow such as asking her to leave would be too much for her. I see, I do not want her to lose her baby, I said. It is also your baby Alpha, Dr. Hardy says. What do you propose I do, then? I ask, allow her to stay on the territory, so I may still be able to treat her. Fine, but not in my house she can stay in a cabin up the mountain away from me then, will that fine? I hope so Alpha, and thank you, she says. You are welcome, Dr. Hardy, but once she has her baby, she is to leave. That will not be till March, Alpha. Very well, but she is to stay up in the cabin, only coming down till she sees you. Very well Alpha, she says leaving. Chloe. He what? I ask, Alex. It is better than what he first wanted to do Chloe. And what would that be? He wanted you gone, off the territory, and out of the pack, doctor. Hardy talked him into letting you stay on the territory so she can monitor you, Alex says. He wants me gone. Yes, but he is going to allow you to stay in one of the vacation cabins up the mountain, Alex says. Well, now if that just so generous of the Alpha, I say. Listen, he told me last night he received another letter, and once he read it, he said he knew we were lying to him. He said the note confirmed it, said Alex. Something is up with these letters, every time he gets one, he changes towards you. Just let me find these letters and we can figure out who is doing this to him, said Alex. Did you know, he cannot see our mating marks? I ask, what? But how can he not everyone see them, I see your mark right now. For some reason he cannot see them, I said. That is messed up, we need to figure out what that woman has done to him and what these notes are all about. In the meantime come on my Luna, you can follow me up the mountain to your cabin. Chol Alex, I said. Sorry what, Luna? Asks, Alex. It is Chloe Alex, I am no longer your Luna. Alpha Marcus does not know me or want me and now he is sending me up a mountain because the doctor asked him to allow me to stay, otherwise I would have been thrown out in the cold. Alex pulls me into a hug. I am sorry Chloe, I wish I could fix this for you, he says. Well don't you two look cozy, and you said we are mates, you say you are pregnant with my pup, yet here the two of you are all over each other, said Marcus. Oh Marcus, I was just comforting her, I just informed her she is to move up the mountain. Said Alex. She feels like an outcast. Right, sure you were, the letter I just received said you two were tricking me, she is not having my baby oh no, 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 it is in fact your child she is carrying Alex. You're a stupid man Marcus, you want me gone fine I will leave. I will not stick around here and watch my mate dislike me and accuse me of things that are not true. Goodbye Alpha Marcus I am leaving your territory, I said. Wait you cannot leave now, the doctor wants to monitor your pregnancy, said Marcus. Like you care Marcus, I said. You would not care if I once again lost our baby, if you did, you would not have wanted to toss me away. Chloe, you cannot leave, you need to keep seeing the doctor. Please stay, says Alex. See it is your baby, why else would you be so concerned about it, says Marcus. You know what Marcus? You're right it is my baby, and I will be leaving with her, so when you get your next letter, and it says we are tricking and lying to you, maybe then you will open your tiny little brain and realize we are not lying to you, because we will not be here, said an angry Alex. You cannot leave Alex you are my beta, my best friend, said Marcus. Not anymore Marcus now my job is protecting my Luna, and your baby Alex says. Alex takes out his phone and holds it up to Marcus's neck taking a picture then turns it around to show Marcus, look, do you see the mark now? You stupid ass. How did you do that? You must have something on your phone to make that appear, said Marcus. Give me your phone Marcus now, says Alex. Marcus hands over his phone, he moves my hair to the side and takes a picture, then takes another one of Marcus's neck, turning it back around to Marcus. 
See, still think something is on my phone? You still think this is a fake? Alex asks him. Marcus stands there, staring at his phone, then touches reaches up to touch his neck. He looks at me then at my neck. Why can I see the mark on you on the phone, but not when I look at you? He asks, that is what we are trying to figure out, I say. He starts to laugh. More tricks and lies, he says. Oh my god nothing gets through to him. Goodbye Marcus, I said, turning walking away then decided to turn around and walk right up to Marcus. I place my hand on his chest right above his heart. I will always love you Marcus. I know deep down in here, I pat his chest. Your love for me remains hidden in there somewhere, I tell him. Standing on my tippy toes, I pull his head down to mine, I place our foreheads together, I pray to the moon goddess. Someone can help you and return your memories, my love. I lightly kiss his lips then walk away. I climb into my truck Alex jumps into the passenger seat next to me, you can not come with me Alex. Someone needs to keep an eye on him and report things to me, I tell him. I am going for help. Fine, my Luna for you I will stay, please be careful. He leans over placing his forehead on mine, promise me you will be safe, if anything would happen to you or that baby, I do not know what I would do, he says. He kisses my cheek then slides out of my truck closing the door. I smile at him then take one last look at Marcus in the mirror and away in the direction of someone I pray can help me. Chapter 35 King Abel. Think my love, is there any place you can remember going with your sister and family she might be hiding out at? We already searched them Abel, there is no other place I can think of I am sorry, says Martha. Do not be sorry my love, we will find Raven and Penny eventually, they have to mess up sooner or later. I said. Father Abel come quick, one of my human staff barges in. What is going on? I ask, the others have claimed there is a female werewolf in the courtyard. There is a group of your men trying to get into her truck to get her. I run past the human towards the courtyard using in vampire speed. When I get out to the courtyard, I see hundreds of vampires swarmed around a vehicle. Martha is now at my side. Pull them back, my love, I say. Martha flicks her hand, and all the vampires fly off. Enough, stand down now. I command. The door to the truck opens, and Chloe steps out. Abel, please, I need your help, she says. When everyone realizes who she was, they all bowed and left the courtyard. My dear Chloe, what has happened? I asked. We take Chloe up to my office. Chloe, you're pregnant, Martha says once we are in my office. Yes, how did you know? Chloe, asks. My dear, have you forgotten who and what I am? She giggles. I watch as she places her hand on Chloe's stomach and closes her eyes. Her hand glows white. Come now Chloe, lay down here on the couch. You need to rest the baby is in distress my dear, says Martha. I use my vampire speed to pick Chloe up and place her on the couch. You must sleep now Chloe, when you wake up, I will check your baby again, then you can tell us why you need our help, says Martha. Yes, Chol my dear, rest now, we can talk later, I tell her. There was no way I was going to allow her to risk her baby. Martha places her hand on Chloe's forehead. I watch as her hand glows a light green and within seconds Chloe is sleeping. Is her baby going to be all right, Martha? I ask. I have placed her in a resting state for a few days my love. She needs to rest and calm down. If not I am afraid her baby will not make it, Martha says worried. Whatever it is that is troubling her has to be extremely bad for her to risk her own baby's life. I will call Alpha Marcus, perhaps he can fill us in, I said. No, Abel, wait, something tells me this involves Marcus, hold off, I will wake her in the morning.
she can explain to us the issue, then I will place her back to rest, says Martha. Martha never left Chloe's side throughout the night. Every so often she would touch her belly to check the baby. The rest is helping, the baby is not in as much de-stress like when she first arrived, we are going to have to help her stay calm, even if that means I keep her asleep as much as possible, I will not let her lose this baby Abel, says Martha. Chloe. Wake up Chloe dear wake up, I hear a soft voice. I slowly open my eyes and see Martha sitting next to me. I go to sit up, but she pushes me back down. No Chloe stay lying down, in order for your baby to be alright you need to stay in bed for a while dear. Says Martha. Chloe, my dear, when you showed up last night, you said you needed my help, what is wrong, my dear? Abel, ask me. What can we help you with? I take a deep breath and explain to them everything that has happened since Halloween night. Raven, says Martha. It was Raven, she must have put a spell on him and erased his memory. Can you remove the spell? I ask. I would need to be near Marcus and figure out which spell she it was she used on him, says Martha. Then we need to go to him, I said, trying to get back up. No, lay still, the Chloe, I will see if I can get Marcus to come here to Martha, says Abel who hurries out of the room. Please, Chole, just rest now, we will do all we can, says Martha. Abel. I slam the phone down. I cannot believe what Raven has done. My love, I have placed Chloe back into a resting sleep now, any luck with Alpha Marcus? No, it appears because he was reunited with us after February 26th, he has forgotten us as well. He only remembers our long-ago encounters and said there was no way he would even be associated with a blood sucker, then hung up. This is going to be harder than we thought, says Martha. I am going to go to my spell room and get to work, there has to be something in my books to help. In the meantime I will keep Chloe asleep, there is no reason to keep her stressed and harm the baby. Good idea my love, good luck with your books, let me know if I can help, in the meantime I shall keep the sleeping Chloe safe. Raven I am back Penny, I have just dropped off another envelope to the stupid Alpha Marcus. As long as he keeps reading my letters he will continue to be under my spell and not remember a thing. Good the more his mate suffers the better, it will teach her to get into my business. Says Penny. From what I hear he has kicked her out of the pack house and into the mountains, she is pregnant and all alone. I laugh. Wait, she is pregnant? Penny, ask. Yes so? You never told me she was pregnant Aunt Raven, I want to hurt her, make her pay for what she caused me. But I do not want to hurt a baby Aunt Raven and Penny says. What a weak witch my niece is. You should have thought about all of that before you wanted your revenge. Now, IT is too late. Besides, I am sure the baby is fine. The doctor is keeping an eye on her, I say. What, now? Asked, Penny. Now, now you get back to training. It is almost time. Alpha Marcus. Another letter has come today. I am sitting here in my office thinking back to what Alex said the other day. When you get your next letter, and it says we are lying and faking something you will open your tiny brain and realize we are not lying to you, because we will not be here. And here in the letter it says Chol is still lying to me, only Chloe has been gone a week now. How can she be lying to me if she is not even here? After reading the newest letter and locking it away, I take a seat on my couch and try to reach out to my wolf, Lucian, buddy, where are you? I have not heard from you in a while. Still there is no answer. Since the day I woke up in the hospital I have not been able to reach my wolf or shift. It is like I do not even have a wolf anymore. I get up and leave my office. Once downstairs, 
I leave the house and head for the tree line. I strip and try to shift. Nothing happened. I cannot shift, Lucian is really gone. Christmas has come and gone. It is now January 24th, Chloe remains in her sleep. Her belly is now swollen, the baby has grown strong, soon Martha will wake her. Abel. Are you ready to wake her now, my love? I ask her. Yes, I just hope she understands why I did what I did. Me too, but it was for the best, I said. I watch as Martha places her hand on Chloe's forehead. A few moments later, Chloe's eyes flutter opened. Hello, Chol, dear, how do you feel? Martha asks her. Restful but tired and hungry, she says. We will get you some food, my dear, I tell her. Were you able to get through to Marcus and figure out the spell used on him? Chol asks. No, Chloe, I am sorry, we reached out to Marcus, but he did not remember us either I am afraid, I tell her. I have been reading through my spell books my dear, but I am afraid I have come up with nothing, says Martha. Chol tries to sit up, but due to her enlarged belly she has issues, what in the world, she says. How long have I been asleep? I have placed you in a restful sleep for two months, Chol, I did it to save your baby, says Martha. So, I am four months pregnant now? Yes, please try to understand, I did what was best for you and your baby. And now? How is my baby, she asks. Martha smiles at her. I am happy to tell you the baby is healthy and strong, no longer in distress. Then I thank you for saving my baby. You are welcome. Abel? Yes, Chol. There is only one thing left we can do to get Martha near Marcus, she says. How? I ask. We are going to need Alex's help. What do you have in mind, Chloe? Asked Abel. Get Alex on the phone, we need to make a plan to have Alex kidnap Marcus. Chapter 36 Chloe Chloe, honey, you need to stop pacing. Says Martha. I am nervous, we have not heard anything from Alex or Abel yet, I said. Do they have Marcus or not? Abel told us he would call when they have him, remember Abel is a vampire he cannot walk on to that territory uninvited. Says Martha. I know, I just hoped we would have heard something by now, I just hope Alex can pull this off, I need my Marcus back. I spoke. Remember Chloe, we do not know which spell my sister Raven has used yet, I may not be able to bring your Marcus back. Martha says. I know Martha, and I thank you for at least giving it a try. I will do my best, my dear, but no promises, said Martha. Alex. This is it, I pray to the moon goddess this works, I open the Alpha's office door and enter, hey Marcus, what's up? I ask, just catching up on some paperwork, he answers. Here I brought you a cup of coffee, I thought you could use it. I said handing him a cup. Oh, perfect thank you Alex. I do need it. He says taking the cup and a drink of it. That is right Alpha, drink up, and go to sleep. So, Marcus, I was, wondering if I could read those letters, you have been getting? Marcus takes another drink of his coffee, I guess you can, but why man? He asks. The letters tell you Chloe and I are together, lying and tricking you. I would like to figure out who it is that is sending these letters. I tell him. Marcus opens the top drawer on his desk and pulls out a key, walks over to his file cabinet, unlocks it then stumbles trying to catch his balance. The drugs I slipped into his coffee must be kicking in. I have warriors waiting in the hall ready to carry him to the SUV once he is out. I called a pack meeting without letting Marcus know about it. 
I needed to inform the pack about the truth of their alpha and the events that have taken place. They all agreed to help any way they could to get their alpha his memories back and bring their Luna home. Alex, I do not feel so well, Marcus says, then thanks to the drugs Marcus is flat on the floor passed out. Opening the office door, I order the warriors to collect the alpha and head for the SUV. I open the cabinet door, take out the letters, then head out after them. I pray for the sake of this pack, Luna, and Marcus the vampire, and which know what they're doing and can help him. Chloe. Chloe, Chloe, Martha calls entering my room. The plan worked there on, their way back, with Marcus and the letters. Finally, now maybe we have a chance to undo what Raven has done, I say. I really hope so Chloe, remember no promises though, but it is a good thing Alex was able to retrieve those letters. They will help me figure out the spell, says Martha. I need to go, make sure everything is ready in the dungeon for our guest. I will come with you, I said, getting to my feet. How are you feeling today, Chloe, she asks. Pretty good, I was just laying here feeling my baby kick, I said. Oh, it is kicking. May I feel it before we head down? She asks, of course, I say as I lay back down and allow her to feel the baby kicking. Feeling my baby kick is an incredible feeling, I just wish Marcus were able to experience the kicks of our first child together. Tomorrow, your doctor has is going to do a checkup on me, I say. She was kid enough to kept watch over you and the baby through your restful sleep as well, she may be a vampire, but she has been around a very long time, she knows what she is doing. Martha says. I am hoping she can tell me the sex of the baby, I want to think of names and stop calling the baby it, I laugh. I am sure she can, come on, let us go get things ready, before they get here with the alpha. Says, Martha. Everything is ready for Marcus, so he is comfortable, he is not a prisoner after all. The dungeon door opens, two warriors walk in, carrying the passed out Alpha. I watch as they lay him on the bed, Luna Chloe, Alex says, rushing to hug me. It is good to see you, while pregnancy sure suits you, he smiles. Thank you, Alex, it is good to see you too. I just wish it were under better circumstances, I said. I agree, says Alex. Welcome back, Abel. I say, hugging him. Thank you, my dear. Do you have the letters? Asked, Martha. Alex takes them out of his jacket, wailing into the cell and handing them to Martha. She quickly opens them and starts to read them. Oh, no, she says. What is it, my love? Asks Abel. This is not a spell, she says. Then what is it? I ask. It is a brainwashing program, Raven is reprogramming his brain. By the sound of this last letter I would say she is trying to make him her minion, says Martha. On her fourth letter, she went and put his wolf to sleep. No wonder he never heard from his wolf or shifted, said Alex. How do we undo this? I ask, Martha looks up at me. I am sorry Chloe, I don't think I can. She speaks. No. There has to be something you can do, I say. If it was a spell, then perhaps, but I am not skilled with brainwashing dark magic spells, says Martha. I will take these to my spell room and work on it, but it may come down to where Raven may be the only one to remove it, or... Or what? Asks Alex. Or Raven would have to die for it to be broken and everything to return, either way I think Raven may be the only key to helping him, she says. I break down crying. Alex pulls me into a hug. Come my love, let us get to work on these letters. We shall at least see if there is anything we can do, says Abel. Here, says Abel holding out two sets of keys to Alex and me. These are the extra keys I had made for you, 
both to the dungeon and the cells. Both me and Alex takes a set. Thank you, I say through a tear-stained face. When you close the door it will lock automatically, for now he should sleep till morning, Abel says. Come, Alex says, you are going to rest to till morning, Luna. I take one last look at Marcus, then follow them out of the dungeons back to the house. Martha and I shall be in her spell room if you should need us, says Abel. Alex, make sure Chloe rests, no stress, she sees the doctor first thing in the morning, Martha tells Alex. I will take her to her room to rest now, Alex says. When Martha and Abel disappear into the spell room, Alex walks me up to my room. Once he helps me on the bed, he grabs a chair and sits beside the bed facing me. How are you and the baby doing, Luna? He asks. If I had my husband back it would be better, but the restful sleep Martha placed me in helped a lot, my baby is fine now, it is no longer in distress. That is good news Luna really, I know how hard it was for you when you lost the first baby, he says. Touching my hand. So, doctor tomorrow. Yes, just a check up, I am hoping she can tell me the sex of the baby, I said. Alex and I talking about my baby and Marcus. For a while longer. Because they had forgot to give Alex a room, Alex was fast asleep on the couch in my room. I am lying here thinking about my baby and Marcus. I cannot help but wonder what will happen if Martha cannot undo what her sister has done. Will my baby ever know his father? Will I ever have my maid again? Will Marcus even accept his own child? Who could have hurt Raven so much to make her so cruel? Why is Penny following her? The alarm wakes me up at 6.30 a.m. My doctor's appointment is at 7.30 a.m. I get up take a fast shower, wake Alex and head down to find Martha and Abel. Good morning, Chloe, Alex, I hope you both slept well, said Martha. I did not get much sleep I am afraid, I said. Did you have any luck with the letters? Some. But not a lot I am afraid, but I will not give up, I just needed some food then I will take you to the doctors, after that we pay Marcus a visit, said Martha. If he will allow me to touch his forehead and look into his eyes maybe I can pick up something. Okay, let us eat and head out. I want to get back and see Marcus, I said. Just remember Chloe dear, he still is not your mate and now that he is locked up, he is going to be even angrier with you. With all of us I am afraid, says Abel. I know, but I need him to see me pregnant, I need him to feel his baby inside me move, I said. And if he will not touch you? Ask Alex, then, I just wait him out. Good morning, Miss Chloe, how are we feeling this morning, asks the doctor, I am feeling fine, other than nervous and a bit of anxiety, I said. I heard the Alpha is here, so that is how I expect you to feel. Shall we take a look at the baby? Yes, do you think you can tell the sex of the baby yet? I asked, oh my, I am sorry Chloe, I forgot to ask you the last time I saw you. I have known the sex of your baby since December my dear, she says. Tell you what, let me do my measurements on the baby, then I will turn on the sound so you can hear the heartbeat, then I will show you what you are having, she says. Ten minutes last the doctor speaks. Okay ready? I just turned on the sound, you should hear the heartbeat any time. A couple seconds later I hear a strange sound, Backslash what is that sound? I ask. That sound is the baby's heartbeat, nice and strong. Says the doctor. It was so amazing, a tear rolls down my cheek, I wish Marcus were here to hear his baby's heartbeat with me. Wow, you know? Says Martha, that sure is a strong heartbeat. Okay, are you ready to know the sex of the baby? She asks, yes. Both me and Martha say, she turns the screen towards me. I cry as I see my baby for the first time on the screen, 
tears roll down my face as she points out the little head, arms, legs, toes, fingers, and the heartbeat, and this right here, she says. Is your son's, little Willie? She says, it's a boy? I ask, it sure is, and an extremely healthy one too. Says the doctor. Oh my god, I am having a little boy, a little handsome boy of my own, I am so happy more tears fall down my face. Chloe, are you all, right? Are you not happy about having a boy? Martha, ask. What? Oh no, no I am extremely happy, my very own little man. I say, Martha laughs at me. After we thank the doctor, make my next appointment, Martha and I head back to the coven. Welcome back, how did it go? Asked, Alex. Very good, we got to hear the heartbeat, I said excited. That is so cool, I cannot wait to find my mate so I can have my own pup and experience all that, says Alex. Did you find out the sex of the baby? Asks Abel, entering the room. We did. Says Martha, kissing her husband. And what are we having? Asks Abel. We are having a boy, I say happy and proud. That is awesome, congratulations, says Alex. Hugging me. Yes, splendid news, I am happy for you dear Chloe. Says Abel. Okay, says Abel. Shall we all make our way down to the dungeons to see Marcus? When Abel opens the door to the dungeon, we can hear an angry Marcus yelling. Good morning, Alpha Marcus. Who the hell are you, and where am I? You do not remember me old friend? I am King Abel Saxon, you are in my coven. You are the bloodsucker who called me, trying to say we are friends, says Marcus. Yes, only we really are friends Marcus. We brought you here in hopes to help you remember everything. Says Abel. We? Who are we? Marcus asks. Alex, Martha, and I step forward out of the shadows. Oh, you have to be kidding me. He speaks. Marcus man, you have to let us help you. Says Alex. Help me. There is nothing wrong with me, you all kidnapped me, he yelled. How dare you betray you Alpha Alex, you will pay for this. I step towards the cell bars. And you, I thought you were gone for good, he says. No Marcus I came here asking our friends for help Marcus, you are under a dark witch's hold, and we need to break you free of it, I said. Marcus laughs at me. You're all crazy. Martha steps forward, Alpha Marcus, if you will allow me to touch your forehead and look into your eyes perhaps, I can help you, asked Martha. After a couple of moments, Marcus agrees and stands in front of Martha. Just as her hand reaches up to touch Marcus, he grabs her arm pulling her against the bars. Open these bars now, or I snap her neck. Marcus yells. Abel hisses, Marcus let her go please, she only wants to help you, we all do, I say stepping towards Martha. Just open the cell, Chloe, now, he says. In a swift move I grab and pull Martha from his crib, tossing her towards Abel, with Marcus behind the silver bars and not having his wolf he was weakened. Which helped me save Martha from him. Marcus yelled in frustration. Being so close to Marcus the baby is bouncing around inside me, he knows he is near his father, Marcus. Do you know what happens when mates are having a pup and are near one another? I ask him. What? Why are you asking me this Chloe? Just answer the question, Marcus. The pup starts kicking and moving like crazy, okay, he says. I take his hand and place it on my belly, our son is going crazy inside me. That is our son inside here, Marcus, he recognizes his father is close, I say, it is a boy? 
he asks looking at his hand on my swollen belly. Yes. This is our baby Marcus, our son, I say again. Marcus drops to his knees, still touching me. My son. Chapter 37 Two days ago, Marcus fell to his knees touching my belly, feeling our son move and kick for the first. Now, he has refused to touch me. Martha has not been able to find anything to undo her sister's brainwashing spell. I am losing all hope, I am starting to believe my son will never has his father and I will never have the love of my life back. When are you going to let me out of here? I asked Marcus, I have a pack to run, duties to tend to, more important things than sitting in this cell having to deal with the likes of you. Your pack is aware of your location, I tell him. Alex, has been in charge and running things just fine. See I knew it, you are both together, and just like the letter said you are trying to steal my pack from me, says Marcus. I shake my head, nothing we do or say is getting through to him. This is not my Marcus, my Marcus is gone, I do not know this man in front of me. The dungeon door opens, Martha steps in. She looks so tired. Any luck? I ask. No, I am sorry Chloe, but I have two more books I still need to read through. I am waiting for a friend I met a while back that is a very powerful witch to get back to me, I am hoping she can help us. Keep me informed, I said. Chloe, you are worn out, you need rest, said Martha. Lock me in the cell, I say. What? What do you mean Chloe? What I mean is, use your power to hold Marcus in place then lock me in with him. I say. Chloe, are you crazy? You are pregnant. Says Martha. This is not the same Marcus you knew Chloe, he can hurt you, or worse, this Marcus dislikes you. He will not hurt me, Martha. I am his mate, I carry his baby, I said. No matter how he feels about me now, he still would never hurt a pregnant woman. I do not agree with this Chol, Abel and Alex will not be pleased about this. Martha uses her power to hold Marcus back against the wall, I open the cell, stepping inside then closing the door behind me. I hear it click locked. Martha drops her hold on Marcus. Why did you come in here? Get out, he says. No, I say. Get out Chloe, I do not want you anywhere near me, he says. Why? Afraid you might remember I am your mate, I said. No, I am not afraid, he says. Because there is nothing to remember, he says. Then there is nothing to worry about, then is there? I said taking a seat on his bed. Marcus moves to the other side of the cell. This is going to be difficult. Raven. Penny, get in here, we have a problem. What is it, Aunt Raven? Penny asks entering the room. Alpha Marcus has disappeared, I have not seen him in a week, which means he has not been getting my letters. Without them I cannot finish programming his mind, I say. What is the difference, now? He still has no memory, he does not remember that bitch anymore, and she is gone, I got my revenge on her. We do not need him anymore, says Penny. You stupid idiot. Yes okay that part is done, but what about my revenge? I was programming him to help me get my revenge. Without him I will have to do it myself now. Besides with the Alpha not reading the program daily it will weaken he could regain his memory. Depending on how long ago he read a letter I may have to begin all over again. What? That he could remember her and find her, my revenge would be nothing, says Penny. Come on we need to find Marcus now. Alex. I am sorry Chloe, what is the plan now? I do not know anymore, Alex, Nikita has even blocked me out, she cannot deal with the loss of Lucian. I cannot blame her for blocking me out, I am a failure. I lost everything ever precious to me, my family, pack baby, mate and now my wolf. I am tired Alex, I have lost all hope, Chloe says. You cannot give up Chloe, not yet, I said. 
I reach over and pull her into my arms, I wish I knew how to make everything better again. Martha is not giving up yet, she is waiting on her friend to call her back. She is a powerful witch Martha is hoping she may be able to help us, Chloe says. Only I know she is going to say the same thing as everyone else, I just cannot bear it anymore. What are you saying, Chloe? I am leaving Alex. What a no, Chloe you cannot leave. I say. I am sorry, but I cannot take any more, I love him too much. I always will, but thanks to two selfish witches, after revenge he will never love me again. She says, my phone goes off. Hello? Chloe. Alex does not understand. He has never found his mate. He does not understand what it is like to be rejected by the one person you love more than anything. Chloe, I have to go. There is an issue at home. Just do not leave, okay? Give it a bit more time. I will call you later, Luna. Alex says, kissing my head, then heads home. I walk back into the dungeon, to in front of Marcus's cell. You again, I thought when you left the cell, I had finally seen the last of you, says Marcus. You really despise me, don't you? I ask. What? No, I do not hate you, I just do not know you, you're playing games with me, and that baby we both know belongs to Alex not me, he says. You felt him Marcus, you felt him react to you and your touch, I say. Alex was standing behind you, the baby was reacting to him, he says. Oh really, well Alex is not here, your son is still going crazy inside me, feel, I said. No, I am not touching you. He says. Why? Scared of knowing the truth? I asked, Marcus jumps to his feet and storms towards me. Are you afraid you know deep down he is yours and it would mean I have not lied to you? I am not afraid of anything, Marcus says. Then, touch me. I said, no. Coward, I called him. Touch me, touch your son, I yell at him in frustration. He storms to the back of the cell furious, I called him a coward. I took that opportunity to unlock the cell door and step in closing it behind me. I walk up to him and turn him around. There is a tear on his cheek. Are you, crying? I ask. He does not say a word. Touch me Marcus, I tell him. He looks me in the eyes. I see a glimpse of vulnerability. I reach out and take his hand placing it on my swollen belly. Instantly our son knows his father is there and goes crazy kicking. See, he knows his father, I say. Marcus grabs my face and smashes his lips on mine. I deepen the kiss. He is kissing me the way he used to, with the love and affection he used to have for me. Just when I thought I was getting through with Marcus, he pushes me away, I fall on the bed. No, no what are you doing to me? Marcus asks. What do you mean I am not doing anything to you, I said. My head hurts I am so confused, so many things flying through my head, he says, grabbing his head. Are you remembering Marcus? I ask. No just the words of the letters they're all flying through my head at once, so much pain to many words, he says he falls to the floor passed out. I open the cell and grab my phone to call Abel. Within minutes Martha and Abel are beside me and Marcus. What happened? Asked Martha. I made him touch my belly, he grabbed my face and kissed me, I thought I was getting through to him, but then he pushed me away, he freaked out said all the words from the letters were flying around his head at once, then he passed out. I think you did it Chol, I think you have made breakthrough, says Martha. What? How? I ask. I have to check with Harmony when she gets here to know if I am right. Right about what my love? Abel asks. I think the baby's and Chloe's love for Marcus is breaking through to him, I could be wrong, like I said I need to check things with Harmony, but we might just have an answer, she says. I look down at Marcus's handsome face, brush his black hair away from his eyes. We really do love you Marcus. 
a black mist comes out of his mouth and hovers in the air above him, back away now, yelled a voice. Abel pulls me and Martha away from Marcus and out of the cell. The woman who yelled entered the cell with a black box open, she chants words, and the black mist enters the box. She places the lid on the box and says some words in a language I do not understand. The box melts around the edges sealing itself shut. She bends down and places her hands on Marcus's chest. Who is she? I ask. That is Harmony, says Martha. She is here to help us chole, she is the one I told you about, she is a very powerful witch. We stand there watching the witch wave things over Marcus and chant, her eyes were glowing green, her hands white. After some time she stops and walks over to us. The real Marcus is still in there, he can see and hear everything going on around him, only he cannot stop his mind from doing and saying the things he has. Harmony says. His soul is in great pain because of this. What does this mean Harmony? Martha asks. It means when you told this child her love can reach him you were right, that kiss you talked about was your Marcus breaking through. The brainwashed program spell, played the words over again trying to gain back control, she says. So, what do we do now? Asks, Martha. Now, we lock this child in with her mate, the more she is with him and keeps pushing him the better. In the meantime you and I Martha need work on a spell to help her and remove this program spell for good and return him to normal. It is going to take her love and our magic to do it. Finally, there is hope. Keep pushing him my child, says Harmony. Abel. Phone rings. Hello? Father you need to come quick. Beta Alex's car has been made to crash, it looks like he was taken. Where? Just off, our coven territory. Over the bridge. On my way. Martha my love you and Harmony, continue here with your spell, there is something I must look into. Okay, my love, we shall see you soon. With vampire speed I am at the reek in under two minutes. I look through the car and around, this was no accident. Hello, brother-in-law. I whip around and see Raven. I go to charge at her, but she uses her magic to hold me still. That is not how you greet family, Abel TSK. She says. Have you not done enough damage which, I ask? Not even close, I take it you have my puppet? I do and you will never get to him, I say. I do not need him anymore now, Penny got her revenge on his mate, he no longer remembers her, she is gone, now it is my turn to get my revenge. Stop this now Raven, these people have done nothing to you, I say. The girl and her mate have not, but they had to my niece, so I helped her get her revenge. Then why did you do this? Where is the beta, I ask. Like I said Abel now is my turn for revenge. On whom, and for what? I ask. On Alex Porter, she yells. He will regret ever making fun of me, for turning me down to prom, laughing at me. No one laughs at Raven Miller and gets away with it. There was black smoke, and she was gone. I could move again, all this time it has been about her getting revenge on Alex, she used Penny. She had her believe Alistair Kane killed her mother knowing she would want revenge and ask her for help, so she could get to Alex. Dear Lord now she has the man that drove her mad, and to the dark magic. I must get back and tell Martha and Harmony, we must work faster and find Alex before she kills him. Chapter 38 Alex Freezing water hits me in the face. Wakey wake, little wolf. I hear a woman's voice. I blink opening my eyes, I cannot move, my legs and arms have been tied to the chair I am sitting in. Where am I? I ask, you do not need to know that right now, the voice says. Who, are you? I ask. What, do you want with me? All in good time but all in good time. The women's voice says. Just get yourself comfortable, you are going to be here a while. Why? 
What do you want from me? I ask. I am not an alpha. No, you are just a mean bully, that is who you are. The voice says, what? I am not a bully, I say. Oh, but you are, you bullied me for years, you laughed at me, do you have any idea what that does to someone's self-esteem? Says, the voice. No, how could you, you were popular, you and Marcus always so high on yourselves. Wait, are you talking about high school? Like so many years ago? I am not that same kid anymore, I grew up I became the beta, I respect everyone, I said. Oh, you changed, my mistake then, I was wrong, and I should let you go then, what do you take me for? You think because you made yourself a better person, that you can wipe away the four years you bullied me? Or the embarrassing humiliation you put me through, she says. Because of you, I could not show my face at the prom or graduation. I did not know what to say, I was a bully as a teen yes, but I bullied so many, some I did not even know their names. They meant nothing to me. Look, I am sorry, okay, I do not even know who you are okay, I picked on a so many people without even knowing them okay, so for what it is worth I am sorry. I tell her. Figured. I figured you would not remember me. Why don't you stop being a coward and show yourself already, I said. I lift my head, the figure steps out of the shadow, she is beautiful, her long black hair makes her green eyes pop. What is she talking about I would never pick on anyone this beautiful? Remember me now, Alex? She asks. No, I am sorry I do not, but I can honestly say I would never pick on anyone as beautiful as you, I say. The woman begins to laugh. No, you would not, but I did not look like this back then, she touches her face. This is my doing, I used a spell to make myself beautiful, she says. Let me tell you a little story. You see, my father was a very powerful warlock, who made a lot of enemies. My sister was older than me she had already left the house got married and had a baby by the time I was six years old. It was just me left at home, one day a werewolf came looking for my father, he found six-year-old me instead, so he left my father a message. She told me. What was the message? I asked. He took a sharp knife, just like this one here. She holds up her hand, reveling a silver knife in her hand. He took that knife and slashed me here, she says. Slashing my right cheek deep with the silver knife. Then he slashed me here, she says with a smile on her face as she slashed me across my left eye. I growl out in pain from the silver. Remember me now, Alex? I never done that to you, I said. No, you did not. You just bullied me for the scars he left behind on my face, she says, then waves her hand over her face to reveal her true looks. She was still the beautiful woman just hidden behind deep ugly scars on her face. My left eye was on fire, the silver was still burning through me. Does the name Raven Miller ring a bell, Alex? She asks, oh, dear God Raven, I remember her now, I would pick on her to impress Whitney the girl I was dating back then. I scream out in pain as she stabs me in the shoulder with a silver knife. Answer Emmy, she yells. Yes, yes, okay, I remember you Raven. I answered her. I had a crush on you Alex and you hurt me, I always dreamed of you taking me to prom, but do you remember what you said to me? She asks, I did not say any, the pain from the silver was pure torture. I scream out again and try to break my ties as she stabs me again in the other arm. Answer me, Raven says. No, okay, no, I do not remember. I said slightly out of breath from fighting the pain and trying to break my restraints. Figures all bullies never remember, well let me refresh your memory shall I, she says. It was a week before prom, they announced tickets were on sale starting that day. You had just come out of the locker room after football practice with your buddy Marcus. 
You bumped into me and for once you said sorry, no name calling or anything just sorry. So I took the chance and asked you if you would be my date for prom, you looked me straight in the eyes and laughed at me. You were laughing so hard, when your friends showed up asking what you were laughing at, you put your arm around me, pulling me into the middle of your friends, and said, the daughter of Frankenstein asked me to prom, then you all laugh at me. And if that was not embarrassing enough, you lift my head and held my hair back so they got a good look at my face, then you said, Scarface thinks I would be seen at a dance with her, you laughed and humiliated me, you followed me to class laughing the whole way. I was a kid raven, I was with Whitney, I wanted to impress her. I said, I am sorry. Oh, you're sorry, haha <laughs> like that's going to fix everything you did to me, how you made me feel, she says. Tell me Alex, what do you think your Whitney would say now seeing you with the same scars as me on your face? She laughs, then drags the silver knife across my chest. I scream out in more pain. That is right, scream for me, Mutt Raven says. Enough you witch enough, I yell. Enough? Oh, I think not, I have only just begun. I said I was sorry, I was a kid it was a long time ago Raven enough, these scars will never heal you made then with silver my mate will never want me now if I ever find her, so you got your revenge, I said. You just don't get it do you? What you have done to me, she says. I only picked on you the wolf that did that to your face is the one you should get revenge on. I said. Oh, but I have, you see my face is not the only thing he scared that day, she says as she lifts her shirt over her belly. I turn my head a little to see the words carved into her stomach. Alistair Kane. Oh my god it was Alistair who did that to her. Alistair Kane, did that to you? I asked. Yes, his little message to my father, she says. So, why have you not got him back for what he did to you? I ask. Oh, but I have, you see, six years ago I killed my sister because she refused to help me get my revenge on you, my niece. Found me over her mother's body, so I told her Alistair Kane killed her mother. So with a little help from me she made him into her little puppet and had him kill his wife under a spell. So you see, she helped me get revenge on him and his sons. So, Penny is your niece? I ask, oh, that is right you would know her since she got stupid and married her puppet, your alpha's father. She says. This witch thinks she killed her sister, she has no idea Martha is still alive. I growl out in pain again as she stabs the knife into my leg. Raven enough, let me go. I say. Again, she bursts out laughing. It is enough for now, but I am not letting you go, she says heading for the door. Better get some sleep Alex, you see in the morning we do round two. She laughs as she turns off the light and exits the room. I struggle with the restraints I know it is not silver. I call out to my wolf Samson, but he is weak, from the silver that entered our body from the knife. I must figure a way out of here and back to Marcus and the others. Come on Samson I know you are weak right now, but I need some help. Chapter 39 For weeks have passed, I am still struggling with Marcus, but at least he stopped trying to push me away. Abel still has not had any luck finding Alex and Raven. Alpha Brooks is helping with our pack, so it is not attacked. Harmony and Martha have not left the spell room other than to see us quickly. Today Harmony is supposed to perform a spell on Marcus and wake his wolf, Lucian. With me due to deliver my baby in two weeks I am extremely uncomfortable. My back is killing me and no matter how I lay or stand nothing helps. I am still locked in the cell with Marcus and when I move around it seems to annoy him. Afternoon, you two. Harmony enters the dungeon. And how are we today? She asks. It is a waste of time, I don't remember her, nor do I wish to remember her, so just let me go, says Marcus. Now, Marcus that was harsh, I thought you were liking the Luna's company, Martha says. 
I am, she is an incredible woman. She is just not my mate, I need to get back to my pack. Chloe, dear, are you all right? Asks, Martha looking at me. No, my back is killing me, I cannot get comfortable at all, I answer. Shall we hold off on waking his wolf, then? Asks, Harmony. No, says Marcus, no, it is fine he is right he needs his wolf awake, and who knows maybe Lucian will remember being Nikita's mate, I say. So, you found a spell to wake my wolf then? Asks Marcus. I knew the spell the whole time, but your brain needed time with Chloe, it's the brainwashing program spell I am working on, says Martha. Martha unlocks the cell and lets Harmony into the cell locking it behind her. Okay Marcus lay down and I will awaken your wolf. I just hope the reason she put him to sleep is because she could not control him like the human part of you, and he is not programmed to kill when he wakes up, Harmony says. I will do my best to control him, says Marcus. I watch Harmony kneel beside Marcus on the bed. She hovers her hands over his head and starts to chant. Her hands begin to glow purple as she moves them around in circles, up and down his body. I notice Marcus's body change. His muscles get bigger, his chest fuller, his wolf was returning to the surface. After 10 minutes there is a loud growl and Marcus shoots up. Marcus? I say. His head snaps to me, his eyes are not blue anymore, they are now gold with a hint of the blue, this is not Marcus. Lucian. Without shifting I allow Nikita to come forward. Mate, says Lucian as Nikita comes forward. He pushes Harmony out of the way and comes to me. My mate, my P.U.P., he says. You remember me, Lucian? Asks Nikita. Oh, course why would I forget my mate and pup? He asked. Martha Harmony and Nikita all fill Lucian on everything that has happened well he was asleep. Let me out now, I want this witch dead. He growls. Lucian started reeking his cell, turning over the bed and tables, throwing things. When Nikita touched him to try to calm him down, he was in the middle of thrashing about, and he ended up hitting Nikita, who flew across the cell hitting her head on the wall. CHLOE, Martha yells opening the door running to me. Oh my god, I hurt my mate, says Lucian kneeling beside Chloe. She needs the doctor now, says Harmony. Lucian picks her up bridal style, following the witches, to the doctor. In the waiting room Lucian's eyes are closed but his body is shaking. Lucian, can you tell me what is happening with you? Asks, Harmony. I am talking to my human, he is going to come forward now, but please tell my mate I am sorry. Said, Lucian. His body, shot out of his chair. Chloe, he says. Lucian? Asked, Martha. No, it's Marcus, he said. And I remember everything. Yes. It worked, said Martha. That's it. The reason she put his wolf to sleep was because she could not program him, while his wolf was awake. She could not program the wolf just the man, which is why when I woke the wolf the spell broke, said Harmony. Asterisk I could see and hear everything, I just could not break through. God I pray Chloe forgives me, it was not me, he says. She knows that Marcus, that is why she has been fighting so hard and long to get through to you, said Martha. She did, I heard and seen everything she did only I could not respond to her. He says. And now I hurt her and our baby, I will never be able to forgive myself if anything happens to them. Says Marcus. Have faith Marcus, she is strong your son is strong. Says, Harmony. My son, that is right. We are having a boy. Pardon me. Says the doctor. My wife and baby. Says, Marcus. The doctor looks towards Martha. 
It is okay doctor, he is fine now, we were able to break the spell, says Martha. Well then, Alpha Marcus, your wife is not doing well, she is bleeding in the brain from hitting it on the wall. The baby however, is doing fine for now but if he stays in her much longer, he will be in distress. Says the doctor. So, what are you saying? Marcus asks. I need your permission to do an emergency C-section, on your wife, she says. I am going to have to take the baby from her first before I can Chloe to have emergency brain surgery. Oh course, you have permission, doctor. Says, Martha. I am sorry, Martha, says the doctor. But I need the permission from her husband, says the doctor. And please keep in mind, without the C-section first, they will both die. You have my permission, doctor, but may I be there when you take my son from his mother? Marcus asks. Nurse, yells the doctor, have Alpha Marcus scrub up and dressed for emergency C-section, you can be there for that Alpha, but you will have to leave for the brain surgery. I understand, says Marcus. Marcus is rushed to the back to get ready. I did not want to tell him yet, but even if I stop her bleeding, it is still going to be touch and go, she could still die, or have brain damage, says the doctor, then rushes off to save the baby and Chloe. Abel. Up there father, you see the hidden door in the rocks just there, he points. You're sure? I ask him. Yes, father, we followed her and your daughter back here, we've been staking it out for three days now, he says. We have only seen the two of them coming and going, we smell the blood of the injured wolf inside. Good, keep an eye on them, I am going for backup, this comes to an end now. I say. I head back to the coven to inform them I have found Raven and Penny at last. Alpha Marcus. Tears roll down my cheek. Soaking the mask on my face as I see my beautiful mate laying there like this. I lift the mask and kiss her forehead. I could never forgive myself if anything were to happen to her after everything I have put her through. I am here my love, you have to fight our son and I need you baby, you have helped me find my way back to you, now fight to come back to us. I tell her. Okay here we go, says the doctor. I watch as she takes a silver scalpel and cuts into my wife. Moments later, I hear the precious sound of my son's first cries. I watch as nurses take him over to another part of the room to tend to him. Okay, let us close her up and get her next door for surgery, says the doctor. Alpha says a nurse. I look over and see she is standing there holding my son wrapped in a blanket. She passes him to me, and I take him. He is a very healthy boy, Alpha congratulations. Says the nurse. Thank you, I say. Look, my son, this is your beautiful mother, I tell my son. Leaning him towards his mother. The monitor starts to go crazy. Doctors and nurses are scrambling all over. We are losing her, says the doctor. And oh save her, Chloe my love fight, I yell. Move her now, says the doctor. I stand there is shock holding our son as they will my wife out the door. A nurse doing chest compressions on her as the doors close, leaving me alone with my son. What have I done? Oh God, what have I done? Chapter 40 Marcus Carrying my son, I step out of the room, I head towards the waiting room. Right away Martha sees me and runs to me. Oh my god he's so precious, how is Chloe, she asks. Here, um, her heart stopped, they rushed her away, I said. The room filled with gasps. I need to have Harper come here, I said. I was going to need her as Chloe's best friend to help with the pup. Give me the baby Marcus and come sit down, says Martha. 
I let her take my son from me while I sit in a chair with my head in my hands at my knees. I cannot lose her not now, not after she fought so hard to bring me back. Finally, after 30 minutes the doctor enters the waiting room, my wife Chloe, how is she? I ask, it was touch and go, Alpha, we lost her three more times on the table, we have her stable at the moment, but the next 48 hours are going to be critical. Says the doctor. I have done all I can for Chloe, the rest is going to be up to her now, I am sorry. Can I see her? I ask. Not yet we want to make sure she stays stable before we move her. In the meantime we can take the baby and get him fed and checked over again, says the doctor. Martha passes me back, my son and I follow the doctor into a room to feed him. When I return to the waiting room with my son a frantic Harper is waiting there with her father Alpha Brooks. Marcus, Chloe did they really lose her four times? Harper asks. I fill them in on everything the doctor told us. Harper takes the baby from me and goes and sits in a corner away from everyone. I can hear her telling my son his mommy is a fighter, a strong woman she will make it. Tears run down my face as I listen to her talk to him about his mother. Marcus, I have called Damien and Brooke home, they will arrive tomorrow, I have people going to pick them up at the airport, Alpha Brooks tells me. Thank you, Richard, they should be here, Alex is Brooke's brother, and they are both close to Chol, I said. Yes, that is what I figured. He said, three hours, three whole hours, and we are still waiting here. I am going crazy, I need to see my Chloe. Alpha Marcus, you can go see your wife now, a nurse says. I jump to my feet, may I bring my son to see his mother, I ask pointing to the baby, yes, of course, maybe it will help her. She says. I take my son from Harper and follow the nurse into Chloe's room. Harper. Father, I want those witches dead. I believe we all do, my daughter, says, Alpha Brooks. Harper, says Martha. I know how you feel, I to love Chloe, but Penny is my daughter, she is only listening to her evil aunt. I am sorry Martha, I know it is Raven who is controlling all of this, but they need to pay. Abel. Entering the dungeon, I find it empty, no one is around. Wait I smell blood, I follow the scent into the cell and see blood on the floor, I dip my finger in it and taste it. Flashes of Chloe's memories flood through my head, I see what has happened here. I rush to the infirmary. I enter the waiting room and see everyone. Chloe how is she? I ask. How did you know my love? Martha asks. I went to the dungeon. I saw what happened through Chloe's memories, I say. How? Asks Harper. I am a vampire deer, I tasted the blood on the floor to see what had taken place. Oh, yuck, says Harper. Chloe? How is she? I ask again. Martha pulls me aside and fills me in. Where is Marcus? I ask. He took his son to see Chloe, Martha says. I need to see Marcus, now that he is back to normal, I said. I walk over to the nurse and ask her to get Marcus for me. Abel, what is going on that you would pull Marcus away from Chloe? Martha asks. Marcus. My dear Chloe looks so pale, a white bandage wraps her head. She looks at peace. A tear flows down my cheek. Our son makes a small noise in my arms. Look son, this is your mommy, she has been waiting a long time for you to come into the world, she loves you very much, my son. I tell him. I place the baby on this mother's chest, so he could feel his mother and hear her heartbeat. Chloe my love, do you feel our son on you? I ask her. He needs you to get better and wake up my love. We also need to name our sweet boy. Come on baby open your eyes for me sweetie, open your eyes and look at our son, we need you Chloe, we need you so much. 
Excuse me, Alpha, but King Abel needs to see you right away, says a nurse. Thank you, I said. I pick up our son, we will be right back my love, I kiss her cheek, then head to see what Abel wants. When I reached the waiting room, everyone was upset and angry. What is going on, here? I ask, Alpha Marcus, says Abel. First congratulations on your son and getting your memory back, it is great to have you back, I am sorry to hear about Chloe, I am sure that Spitfire will pull through. Thank you, Abel, I am hopeful she will pull through. The other reason I asked to see you Marcus, is because we found Raven, Abel says. I see Richard holding Harper back. She was ready to shift. Where is she? I yelled, accidentally scaring my son. Harmony takes him from me. Where is she, Abel? She has been hiding up in the mountains, there is a hidden door between the rocks at the bottom of the mountain. He says. Let's go, I say. Wait, Marcus, we cannot just go up there, we need to prepare we do not know what we are walking into up there, Abel says. He is right Marcus, I want that witch to pay for what she has done as much as you, but Abel is right. Says Richard. You're right, yes we need to prepare. I agreed. But we must hurry she has my best friend Alex hostage, who knows what she has done to him. With me and Martha by your side you will have an advantage, I am more powerful than Raven, and I am positive once Penny sees her mother is alive and Raven has lied to her all these years, she will change sides and help us, at least we hope, says Harmony. Either way that bitch is going down for all the shit she has caused, says an angry Harper. No Harper, I say. I need you here. The reason I called for you to be here is to look after my son for me and watch over my Chloe. As much as I would like to be the one to rip her to shreds, my sister and her son need me. So yes fine I will stay here and look after them for you, she says. That is my daughter, thank you Harper, says Richard. Take good care of your sister and nephew, I know Marcus will be more focused the task at hand knowing you are looking after them. Just promise me, no more deaths, but there's, you all need to come back to Chloe and me, she says. Harper takes the baby from Harmony, come with me Harper I will take you to Chloe so I can kiss her before we leave. Says Marcus. Please, Marcus, allow us all to kiss her so she knows we are here for her. Asks Richard. She is my daughter now after all. Of course. Chloe loves you all, this way, everyone. One by one each one of us enters the room, we each take our turn sending our love and praise to Chloe before kissing her forehead and leaving. Harper places the baby back on Chloe's chest, then begins to sing a soft tune as we all leave to prepare for the witches. Chapter 41 Marcus Alistair Cain showed up with fifty of his warriors to help us. He said he figured since. One of the witches made him kill his mate and she is now his wife, he should be. Here. I cannot say I am happy to see him, I know the witch had him under a spell and made him kill my mother, but the images of that day still plays. Heavy in my head. Damien. And Brooke have returned from school, I sent Brooke to help Harper watch over the Baby and Chloe. Abel, three more alphas, two hundred warriors, one hundred vampires, the two witches. And myself start climbing the mountain. Martha and Harmony are using a clocking. Spell to conceal our scent, and an invisible spell so we can go unnoticed. None. Of us have ever dealt with witches before, so we are not sure what we are all. Heading into. Do we get to kill these bitches, Marcus? Asks Damien. Martha would like us to spare her daughter Penny if we can, she is only. Following her aunt's lies and manipulation, I said. Oh, come on man, she put a spell on Alistair, made him kill our mother then married. Her, and we have to let her live. He says. 
I am aware of what she did Damien, she caused us both our parents, but Martha has done a lot for Chloe and me. I owe her that much. I say. Besides, son. Says, Alistair. That. Child is still my wife, she put that spell on me, she made me kill my mate, I think she is mine to deal with. Fine, says Damien walking off ahead of us. There. Issa loud scream followed by a growl, men scream for help. We turn heading off. Towards the men, the screams stop, it is silent, I pick up my speed, when I finally reach the men, I freeze in shock. One of them must have stepped on a something. Because the trap has sprung, six warriors lay dead, each one with silver spears. Piercing through their body. More. Screams come from up ahead, I take off towards them. Now I only hear one of the men still screaming. When I reached him, he was a mess, a silver saw blade had cut half his face off along with his right arm and leg. I look around and see that the other five men in this group have been decapitated. The others reach me and gasp. My God, says Abel. We have lost ten men so far, I said. Inform the others to watch for traps and triggers, they have traps all over. This mountain. Raven. Wakey, wakey Alex, do not die on me yet. Screw you bitch, just kill me already, Alex says. Not yet, I am still having fun with you. I pour another small bottle of wolfsbane over his head, then use the knife to cut his body more, placing drops of liquid silver in each of the cuts. He screams. In pain, I laugh. Ah, suck it up Alex. You are a big bad wolf, can't you take a little silver and wolfsbane? I see he is having trouble keeping his eyes open. I flick my hand and have the pot of boiling water float across the room, I flick again, and it dumps over Alex's head. He screams out and growls, I laugh as I see his skin blister. Aunt Raven, Aunt Raven Penny came running into the room. What? I answered annoyed. Oh my god, who is that? She asks. Never mind what do you want? I am busy. Raven, what have you done? This was not part of our plan, she says. That is right, this is not part of our plan, this is my plan, my revenge on. This mud I tell her. Oh, my god, that is Alex. You cannot even recognize him anymore, Aunt Raven, you have to stop, she says. I nod my head and make Penny smack herself in the face. Remember your place, Penny. Remember who made you and helped you when you asked. For it, now why are you interrupting me? She sniffs back her tears and speaks. Four of our traps have been activated, they have found us, she say. Damn. It were not ready for them, the others are not here yet, I say. It is just me and useless you, you are not even close to being able to face them. I hear a laugh and turn to face Alex, he is trying his best to laugh. What the hell do you find, funny? I yell at him. A pathic which about to have her ass handed to her, he laughs. Really, you think you are so slick? Well, you are not making it out of here alive. Mutt. I reach over picking up the large bottle of liquid silver off the table, I force. Open his mouth and try to pour it in, he breaks his restraints and attacks me. I could see he was trying to shift, but due to the amount of silver in his body, and the wolfsbane he could not, however he was able to get claws, which he used to tear my face and body. With all my strength, I jammed the open bottle into his mouth and pushed his head up. Alex rolls off me grabbing at his throat, he spits out the bottle, it is almost empty which means he has swallowed the rest. You bitch, I hope they rip you to shreds, 
he says. I get my bloody body to my feet and watch as Alex's body shakes and thrashes about. A satisfying smile spreads across my ripped open face. Then Alex's body stops. Moving and lays is still. Penny. Runs to his side and presses her ear to his chest. You killed him, he is dead, this was not the plan, Raven, she says. Wrong Penny it was my plan, now move we have others to deal with. If you think they are not going to make you pay for killing their beta think again Raven, the plan was revenge, make them suffer like they made us suffer, not kill anyone. Wrong, my plan was to always kill this mutt. Chloe. It is dark and cold, I cannot see anything. I am scared. Marcus? I call out, no reply. I try to move around slowly so I do not fall. A. Bright light shines down over a crib, I hear a baby crying. My baby. I walk. Towards the crib, but I am not getting closer, the light is moving the crib. Away. I run, but the crib is getting further and further away, my baby's cries. Echo through the darkness. I run faster, but I am not going anywhere, I seem to be running in the same spot. My baby, my baby, I scream. There is laughter in the darkness. The baby cries stop, the light goes out. Hello, Chloe. I hear a voice. Who is there? Do you not recognize my voice? Oh my god, no it cannot be. Victor. Hello, Chloe, welcome to my world. He laughs. Show yourself, I say. A bright light appears, standing in the distance is Victor. Wait, what is he holding? Give me my baby, I say. Come and get him, he laughs. I take off running, he is laughing at me, I cannot reach them. Please give me my baby, I say. Catch he says smiling, he throws the baby towards me, I run and dive to. Catch the baby only the baby does not fall. I roll over look up. Another light shines. I gasp standing in front of me is Alex and he is holding my baby. Alex? I say. Chloe, listen to me. He says. Your baby and Marcus need you now, you need to reach your wolf and fight, I can. No longer help them, find your wolf Chloe, find her fast. Help them. Alex's. Body is fading away. Wait, Alex, do not leave me I cry. I am sorry Chloe, but I am being called by the moon goddess now to cross over, my time here is over. Leaning over Alex places a kiss on my cheek, placing the baby in my arms. What do you mean, Alex? Why do you need to cross over? I ask. I am sorry Chloe, I failed you all, I was forced to leave your world, I love. You my Luna never forget me. And oh oh. Alex, I scream. His body floats up and away, the light is gone. I drop to my knees and cry. I love you to Alex, I could and would never forget you. I look down at the blanket in my arms, I pull back the blanket, there is no baby. I am looking down into the sleeping face of a black wolf. Nikita. Nikita, you need to wake up I say taking the blanket off my wolf and stroking her. Face. Her eyes slowly open. Chloe, help me she says. You need to find me, we need to rejoin she says. What do you mean Nikita you're right here I say. No, find me she disappears. Nikita? Where did she go? How do I find her? I asked, aloud. I can help you, my child. Came a voice. Another light appears and standing there. Is. Mother. I cry. Yes, my love it is mom. I get up hugging my mother. 
I miss you so much, Mom, I need you. I say. I miss you to my girl, we all do, I am I am always looking over you and will. Always be in your heart, she says, placing her hand over my heart. Take me with you mom, I want to be with you, I say. No, my love, your place is here on earth with your husband and child, mine place. Is now with the moon goddess in her garden. But I. Listen, Chloe, she cuts me off. You have to fight right now to live, you hear me, you must fight, Nikita can be. Found on the other side of the mountain, you need to be reunited with her now. My child, you both need to enter the mountain and help your loved ones defeat Raven. I can't, I am too weak, too tired mother. I say. You. Can, my dear, now run, run for your life, for the life of those you love, you. Have already lost one, do not lose another, begin your journey inside the mountain, and Chloe, she says. Yes, mother? Always remember who you are, and where you came from, always remember how much. We love you and how proud of you we are, give a kiss to my grandbaby for us my. Dear, now run, Chloe run for your life. I hug my mother one last time, then take off running, I need to fight to live, I must find Nakia and rejoin with her. We must save them all. Harper. Dear God Brooke, quick get the doctor her heart rate is dropping. Come on Chloe fight, you cannot die on us now, fight goddamn you Chloe. Fight. Chapter 42. Marcus. The witch was smarter than we gave her credit for. Her traps have been able to take out 120 of our warriors, we are only left with 30 now. Alistair has sent a warrior up a tree to see how much further before we hit the rocks hiding the entrance. We're there Alpha, just past these trees here is the mountain, the warrior yells down. Finally, says Alistair. We slowly make our way towards our target, keeping a close eye out for traps. Within minutes, we reach the rocks. Abel steps forward and began scanning along the rocks, here, he says. The door is here. Step back Abel, this is no ordinary door I am afraid says Harmony. Only a witch is able to open this door. How do you know that? Asked Damien. See, this mark here? She points. This is the sign of the witch, so only a witch can open a door marked with this. Harmony places her hand on the door, says something none of us but Martha can understand. The mountain rumbles then it opens revealing a tunnel. One of the warriors steps forward and enters the tunnel, wait, I yell. This just seems too easy, something feels off. Silver blades shoot out of the walls and slices the warrior into pieces. God damn it, I said. Can only a witch enter, as well? Raven has places an entrance spell on the tunnel, says Harmony. It will take a bit of time, but I can break this entrance spell. Harmony work as fast as you can on this spell, says Marthia. In the meantime, since I can enter, I am going to find my daughter. Martha, my love no, says Abel. It is not safe, you cannot face them alone. You all cannot enter at the moment Abel, but I can, I need to find our daughter. She blows Abel a kiss, then disappears down the tunnel. Martha, Martha come back Abel calls after her. Hurry Harmony, Martha is going to need our help, she cannot face them alone. Martha. Slowly making my way through the dark tunnels, I turn my hand over to create a light ball to help me see. I hear voices yelling up ahead, I walk as quiet as I can towards them. Soon the tunnel opens and forks into two directions. I must listen hard into each tunnel to know which tunnel the voices are coming from. I head down the left tunnel putting my ball of light out when I reach the end, again it forks in both directions with a room straight ahead. Killing him was not in the plan, Aunt Raven, that's Penny's voice, I hear. Maybe not in your plan but it was in mine, that jerk bullied me for four years of my life, he laughed and humiliated me. 
He deserved to die, I hear Raven say. Oh my god no, she killed Alex. Once we take care of our guest outside, our revenge will be over. My revenge is over Aunt Raven, Marcus does not remember that bitch, and she has left. Now I just want to finish the spell to get my husband back, Penny says. Husband, you mean the monster who killed your mother, the monster who left this scar on my face leaving me hideous, so I was bullied and laughed at, you mean that monster? I know he killed my mother, have you forgotten I got my revenge on him when I made him kill his mate? And cost him the love and respect of his sons, says Penny. No, I have not forgotten, nor have I forgotten you went and married that same monster, says Raven. I fell for the man okay, but I believe a kill for a kill is revenge enough, Penny says. My God, my daughter is so messed up from her aunt, she does not even know it was Raven who tried to kill me, not Alistair. A loud noise startles me. What was that? I peek a little around the corner a large cage is being lowered into the middle of the room, oh god no, inside the cage is Abel and the others. But where is Harmony? I am grabbed from behind, hands over my mouth, so I cannot scream. Shamartha, it is just me calm down whispers Harmony. Harmony, what happened? How did they end up in a cage? I asks. Marcus. Harmony has broken the spell, we hurry inside and follow Martha's scent, when we reach a fork in the road. Harmony went down one tunnel well the rest of us took the other one, halfway down the tunnel the floor under us gave out. We are falling then land with hard thuds, we are inside a cage being lowered into a room. Welcome dogs, so glad you could join us. You must be Raven, says, Alpha Brooks. So nice to see you again, Marcus, she says to me with a smile. Do I know you, witch? I ask, she laughs at me. Really now, Marcus, your friend over there remembered me. I turn to look where she points. Alex, I growl. He can no laugh at me, the witch smiles. I will kill you which I tell her. TSK 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 Marcus. You do not want to get on my bad side so soon. Penny, says Abel. Hello father, she says coldly. Penny, you need to stop this, let us out of here. Says Abel. Now, why would she do that? Dearest brother-in-law, you tossed her away, I took her in, I showed her the true way of life, says Raven. You have taught her nothing but hate and lies, Abel yells. Let's not forget murder and deception, says Alistair. Alistair is staring daggers at Penny. Who the hell are you? Raven asked him. Wait, said Penny. Aunt Raven, how do you not know who he is? Why the hell should I? She asked, are you serious right now, Aunt Raven? Asked Penny. That man is my husband Alistair Kane, the same man who gave you your scars and killed my mother Penny tells her. Raven looks between Alistair and Penny. What? She says shocked. That is the man who you married? Asked Raven. That is the man you made kill his mate? She asks, yes, that's Alistair, says Penny. Raven bursts out laughing. Jesus Christ, says Raven. Penny, that is not Alistair Kane. What? Yes, he is, that man is Alistair Kane, says Penny. I should know I am married to him. Raven stops laughing. I assure you which I am Alistair Kane. Raven was in shock, her face pale. Let us out Penny now I order her. And no Raven stops her. You are not Alistair Kane, Raven says. I will never forget the face of Alistair Kane, the Alistair Kane who left his message on me, Raven said, lifting her shirt to reveal the scar across her stomach that says Alistair Kane. Or the Alistair Kane who did this to my face, she says, waving her hands over her face to reveal her true self. Everyone gasps. You are right, I never did those things to you, I would never do that to a woman, Alistair says. She was six years old when this happened to her, says Penny. 
My God, says Alistair. I would never do that to a child. What the hell is going on, here? Says, Raven. You are not, Alistair Kane. If you are not the Alistair Kane that did this to Raven, then who the hell is the Alistair Kane who killed my mother? Asked, Penny. No one, my child, Martha says, entering the room. M.O.M.? Penny says, yes, sweetheart. Penny faints. Martha yells Raven. How the hell are you still alive? How could you try to kill me Raven? I am your older sister. Sister? Sister? You were never there for me, you wouldn't help me, what kind of sister lets her kid's sister be bullied? I did not let them bully you, I told you what to do, but you wanted to kill them with dark magic. That was not and is not the answer, Raven. I-T-I-S always the answer, she screams. A fireball is thrown at the cage, setting one of our warriors on fire. Martha flicks her finger and the flames go out. Stop Raven, enough, it is over says Martha. Penny groans and comes to. Penny, are you okay? Martha asks. Mom, is it really you? How are you alive? Because Alistair Kane did not kill me my child Martha says. If you were not killed then where have you been all these years? Asks Penny. It was Raven Penny, Raven attacked me and tried to kill me, she thought she had killed me, and she framed Alistair Kane for it. Only she did not check my body, I was still alive only I had no memory of who I was or where I came from. Alpha Corvin Slater found and took me in, Raven used you Penny. It was you. It was you all this time. Says Penny. You made me believe Alistair killed her, I hated him you made me believe revenge was I had to do, because of you I made an innocent man kill his wife and lose his sons, when this whole time it was you. Boohoo Penny, it is not my fault you got the wrong Alistair Kane, you are as pathetic as your mother. While Raven and Penny are arguing, Martha sneaks over and unlocks the cage freeing us. Raven throws Penny across the room, she hits the wall she does not get back up. All at once we all charge Raven, but she is faster than we thought as she uses her magic freezing us all in our tracks. Raven laughs. You stupid fools, you think you can defeat me? A bunch of useless dogs? End this now Raven, no one else needs to die or get hurt, you got what you wanted everyone else here is innocent let them go, says Martha. Shut up Martha, you should have stayed dead. You and these mutts will all die. Chloe. I am running through the dark, Nikita where are you? I enter inside the mountains running through the tunnel. At the fork in the road, I take the tunnel to the left, at the end of the tunnel I see a door and keep running for it. I reach it and push through, it opens to the field on the other side of the mountain. I look around, Nikita. I run to her and drop down beside her, she opens her eyes, my body jolts and shakes. Oh, my god, Chloe. Says Harper. Doctor what is happening to her? Save her. I scream sitting up gasping for air, Chol. I look over and see Harper and Brooke. Marcus? I say. He is not here at the moment, Chloe, says Harper. No, I say throwing the blanket off me. Wait Chol stop, get back in bed you have been through so much says Brooke. I am fine now, I found my wolf, we are fine, I said. We must hurry and get to the mountains now, they need our help. Chapter 43 Chloe Calm down Chloe, you are in no condition to get out of bed. Says, Harper. I have to, Marcus and Dad need me. Sorry Luna, but you just had brain surgery, you're in no shape to face the witches, says the doctor. I feel fine, my wolf is back with me I need to help them. What you need to do Chloe is hold your son, says Harper. I froze, son? Did she say son? I look down at my stomach I am no longer pregnant. I had my baby. I ask. 
Yes, Luna we had to do an emergency C-section to save you and the baby, says the doctor. I watch as Peyton reaches into a hospital crib and lifts out a baby. My hands cover my mouth as I gasp. Here we are sweet boy, here is your mommy. Harper says placing the baby in my arms. My eyes fill with tears, I stare into my son's beautiful blue eyes. You're so beautiful my baby, you look just like your father, I say. Marcus, I have to help Marcus. I have to go save him. You need to look after your son Chloe, Marcus can manage himself fine. Says Brooke. No, you do not understand, Alex and my mom came to me, they told me I had to help them, they're in danger, if I do not go now, it will be too late I say. Wait, Alex, come to you? Brooke said. Yes, I am so sorry Brooke. I say. Is he dead? Asked Brooks. I am sorry Brooke, but yes Alex is gone. I have to go up there, that which killed my brother, I need to go says Brooke. I will go with you child came a voice from the door. We all look up to see who it was, Brooke growls, what the hell are you doing here? Brooke yells at the man. Now Brooklyn is that any way to speak to your father? Save it Drake. You are not my father, you are a traitor, and dead to us, says Brooke. Wait, what is going on here? I ask. I can tell you that Luna Chloe, my name is Drake Porter, I am Brooks and Alex's father, and I am going to need you to come with me, he says. Doctor take her baby, Chloe will be coming with me now. The door opens, and the death-rotting smell of rogues fills the room. Marcus. The pain from the silver and wolfsbane is beyond anything I have ever felt. We must think of something fast to take this witch down before she kills us all. Martha, Abel, and Penny are huddled together in the corner. Penny cannot believe that all these years her aunt has lied to her made her believe her lies making her want to do the horrible things she did. She is so disgusted with herself for all she has done. Alistair has not taken his eyes off Penny, you can see how much hate he has for her in his eyes. He wants nothing more than to kill Penny for making him kill his mate and everything else she has done to him. If Alex and Alistair are the ones who hurt you, why have you done this to the rest of us? I ask, you already killed Alex, Penny already got even with Alistair, just let the rest of us go. That is not Alistair, Raven screams. For the last time, which, I am Alistair Kane. You have black hair and blue eyes. The Alistair Kane who did this to me has brown hair, brown eyes, and a wolf skull tattoo on his shoulder, she says. So, you see, you are not Alistair Kane. Oh, my God. Says a shocked Alistair. That snake used my name to frame me. Who? Asks Abel. Drake. Porter. Did someone say my name? We all turn around. Drake Potter is standing there with a huge smile on his face. Alistair Kane, Raven yells. That is not Alistair, I am Alistair. That snake is Drake Potter. Says Alistair. He is right I am afraid. I am Drake Potter and you, you stupid witch will pay for killing my son Alex. You. You framed me, you good-for-nothing dog, Alistair says. Yes, I went to the warlock for help against you, he turned me down, when I was leaving, I saw his youngest daughter all alone, so I approached her and left a message for him framing you in hopes he would change his mind and kill you, but he got himself killed instead. How could you do that to a small child and frame your alpha? I ask, easy. Quite easy boy, we were best friends Alistair, I was your beta. Then you turned your back on me stripped my rank and banished me, Drake says. I had no choice, you traitor, you double-crossed the council and your own pack, hundreds died because of you, said Alistair. So, all these years I have been hunting Alistair Kane when it was you, like father like son, says Raven. 
But here you are now, I shall enjoy killing you like I did your pathic weak son. Not so fast, witch, says Drake. Go ahead and finish killing them by all means, but then you and I need to talk about the stone, he says smiling. Alistair went to attack Drake, but was stopped in his tracks when Drake pulled Chloe into the room. C-H-L-O-E, I yell. Let her go, Drake or... Or what Marcus? Mm, what are you going to do? Keep in mind I can snap her neck before you reach me, and I have your baby as well says Drake. You sick son of a bitch, says Alistair. I will rip your head off if you hurt my family. Two more guards enter the room pulling Harper and Brooke with them. Alex, Brooke cries when she sees his dead body on the floor. How do you know about the energy, Strong? Raven asked. I know all about it, is all you need to know which, says Drake. I see a smile on Raven's face. What is she planning now? Drake lets go of Chloe and takes a step more into the room. Chloe runs towards me, but I must stop her. No, stop Chloe no not touch us, we're covered in silver and wolfsbane. She stops in her tracks. You bitch, you did all this over something one man did to you back in high school? You tried to kill your own sister and framed another for your crime. You turned that innocent child into your own puppet for your own pleasure, says Chloe. There stands the real man who did you harm and you allow him to live over those who did you no harm? Drake falls to the floor twitching and screaming in pain, Raven's eyes are black. Drake, if you think I would just give you the energy stone you're dumber than you look, you're the monster who destroyed my life, the one who made me this way. The screams of Drake echo off the mountain walls, Raven floats in the air, black smoke circles her as she stares down Drake. We all watch in horror unable to move as Drake's body rips wide open, his bones shattering, his skin shrinking on his body, sucking the life out of him, within seconds his screams stop, there is nothing left of him. How did he think coming here he would live? How did he not expect this witch to not kill him, the man who caused her the most pain? Damien takes this opportunity to jump and knock Raven out of the air. He shifts into his wolf and begins to bite into her, you can hear flesh tear from his teeth. Chloe grabs a bucket and fills it with water and starts to throw water on us to wash away the silver and wolfsbane. The room fills with the loud yelps of Damien's wolf as Raven gained control and starts doing to him as she had just done to Drake. Stop. Every head turns to the other side of the room, Harmony steps into the room. Enough Raven, she says. Harmony. What are you doing here? Raven, ask. I came with them Raven, enough is enough now, you killed the man who has hurt you, let the others go now. No, they must all die. Damien starts yelling again, a bolt of white light shoots across the room knocking Raven over. I run to my brother's side, Chloe leans down to cover Alex's body. Raven fires back at Harmony who has no issue deflecting it back at Raven. Magic flies back and forth across the room, you have no chance against me Raven you know that you are not as powerful as me, says Harmony. Maybe not, but I can still hurt you, says Raven. Alistair, Richard, take them and get out of here. I order. Alistair makes the Drake's rogues release Brooke and Harper and they start to usher them fast towards the door out of the room and mountain. Chloe, you need to go with them now. I say. Not without you and Alex, she says. Pain shoots through my head. I fall to my knees. Come on, my puppet, help me kill them says Raven. My head feels like it is on fire, new, no, Chloe screams. I just make out a black wolf leaping over my head and colliding with Raven, Harmony is at my side in a flash helping me to my feet. Raven is screaming under Nikita, who has no sympathy for her, all her rage and furry is set on ripping the witch apart. Moments later the mountain and quiet, there is no more screaming, Raven lays in a pool of blood at Nikita's feet. Nikita growls, please, do not kill me, help me please, begs a bloody raven. 
Nikita picks Raven up in her mouth by her neck. No, oh, please, Raven begs again. Nikita rips her head clean off her body, Raven's body falls to the floor her head still in Nikita's mouth. She tosses the head into the fire, then makes her way over to Alex's body, carrying him out of the mountain. Chapter 44 Outside with the others Nikita places Alex's body down, she looks over at me then falls to the ground, turning back to human. Chloe, Chloe Marcus yells running to her side. She is passed out, she has used every ounce of strength she had left to kill Raven, allow me to get her to the hospital quick Alpha, says Harmony. Harmony uses her magic seal up the mountain, then makes a smoke ring around us all. When the smoke's clear we are inside the hospital, quick help, Marcus yells. Nurses and doctors, come quickly and placing Chol on a stretcher and wheeling her away from us all. Marcus. After three hours of waiting to hear about Chol, I was finally able to take our son and see her. I am holding my son in the chair next to his mother's bed. The doctors had to redo the stitches several places on Chloe's head and where her C-section is. The doctor said she used everything she had to save me she had nothing left in her to wake up. It may take hours to a couple of days for her to wake up. Meantime I am happy to be able to just sit beside her with our son. I cannot help but think of my best friend and how he was never going to be able to watch my son grow or find his own mate and have his own pup one day. A tear forms in my eyes as I remember our entire life together as best friends, how many times he has been there for me, talked sense into this stubborn head of mine and even saved my life a time or two. I could never have asked for a better friend than Alex. My life, our lives will never be the same without Alex. Alistair Kane. My grandson is such a handsome little man. He shall make a great alpha someday just like his father. It is a shame, a real heartbreak that my Victoria cannot be here to see her grandson and watch him grow into a strong man. Six years I grieved alone in my head for my mate, being under the spell of that child which cost we dearly. For six years my sons had hated me and blamed me for their mother's death, no matter how hard I tried to reach them it was useless. My heart ached for them as much as it did for my mate, six years with my son stolen from me. I can never and will never forgive this witch for what she has done and taken from me. Alistair? Speaking of the witch, if you value your life which leave my sight now I tell her. We need to talk Alistair, after all I am still your wife she says. My wife is dead. Because of you which my mate lays cold and alone in a box in the ground, you are not my wife, you are nothing to me. Please Alistair, Raven had me believe it was you who had killed my mother and done here wrong. It was your beta who tricked her said penny forward slash forward slash. I do not care for your reasons which, you killed my mate, the love of my life, the mother of my children, she was innocent. Whether you all thought it was me or not. You had no right to kill her, I said. You are right Alistair, she never should have died, but that was the only spell my aunt had taught me at the time. When I wanted revenge for my mother, if I had known the one she used on Marcus to forget Chloe, I would have used that instead. I am truly sorry Alistair, she says. I do not accept your apology which, I despise you, I want nothing more than to see you dead, or punished for your crimes, I say. You cannot mean that Alistair, we shared so much, we were happy the last six years. You have to feel some love for me somewhere inside you, she cried. Happy? I was never happy, I was dying inside, every day I tried to fight that spell and kill you, I would cry for my sons and wife. I never felt anything but disgust and hate for you, only the shell of my body you had the spell on was happy and loved you, not me, my soul was dead inside. I am so sorry, what can I ever do to make you see how sorry I am and that the love I feel for you is real Alistair, she says. I could never love you, Penny you killed my mate. I yelled at her. You took my body and used it to kill her as my sons were forced to watch, causing them to hate me and banish me from their life. You want me happy Penny? 
I ask. Yes, Alistair, more than anything she says. Then kill yourself, your death is the only thing that will make me happy. Tell her. How dare you tell my child to kill herself? I look at the door and see Martha entering. No mom it is all right, Alistair has all the right to want to see me dead for all I have done to him, Penny said. You were tricked by your aunt, he has to see that. Says Martha. Oh, I see it, I know she was tricked but put yourself in my shoes, I lost my wife and kids, not to mention six years of my own life plus all the bad stuff and dealings she has made me do to please herself. So I am sorry Martha, but I will not forgive her. I lost my own self too for six years because of my sister and lost my daughter and husband Martha says. So, I do understand. Here is the difference Martha, your husband is still alive for you to love and touch, mine is dead. Your daughter is alive and well and loves you, my sons sure they are alive, but hate my guts. They cannot stand to be around me or look at me because she made me kill their mother in front of them, and last, you get to move on and be happy knowing the witch who did all that to you is dead, you don't need to forgive her or cross bath. Then there is me, whose witch that has done all these things. To me is still alive and is going to live a happy life with her family while I get to suffer alone more hurt and ashamed. So yes excuse me but yes I do want the witch dead I say. I see your point Alistair, I never thought of it that way, I am so sorry for everything my daughter has done to you, but please, please I am begging you do not take her from me, she pleads. Martha it is because of all you have done for my daughter-in-law and grandson that I have a lot of respect for you. I have a lot of respect for Abel as well for all he has done for them, so no I am not going to kill this witch. Penny I hate you I always will but for out of respect for your parents I am going to let you live. But I want a divorce and I never want to ever cross paths with you ever again I say. You may have been manipulated by Raven, but you had a mind of your own as well, you could have stopped all this. You could have chosen a different way or never even started it to begin with. I hope going forward you have learned your lesson and will never do anything like this again. As much as I love you, yes Alistair, I will do as you ask, Penny says. You will never have to see me again after our divorce, and yes I have learned my lesson. I am just sorry it took all this to learn it. Nothing like this will ever happen again from me. She turns and runs from the room. Thank you, Alistair, says Martha. I am deeply sorry for everything you have lost because of my family. If I could ever help you in the future do not hesitate to call me. I nod my head at her, and she runs after her daughter. I sit down in my chair and cry. This is the first time since I lost my wife. My mate that I can cry as the real me outside of my head. I get up and decide I am going to see my wife's grave and tell her how sorry I am. Damien. It has been a whole week since the whole ordeal in the mountains with the witches. Martha and Penny had come to see me in the hospital the other day, they wanted to explain things to me again. Penny said she needed to apologize, I can never forgive her, she took my mother from me, and because of her I hate my father. When Penny left Martha stayed to talk to me more, and what she had to say made a lot of sense. My brother had sent Harper to check on me a few times a day I understand he did not want to leave his son, or Chloe sighed in case she had woke up, at least he sent someone to check on me for him. My ribs are still broken from the witch but I can leave and go home today, so I am stopping by Chloe's room to talk to my brother. Entering the room, I find Marcus feeding his son. Hey Damien, should you be up and about? Marcus asks. Hey bro, yes, I have been released, how is your son and Chloe? I ask. He is doing great, the doc says Chloe is doing good, she should wake up once her body has re-energized itself. That is great man, she is a true hero that one, she has been through so much in the last year and still keeps fighting I say. Yes, I am so lucky to have her as a mate Marcus says. So, listen, man, Martha came to see me. She said a lot of things that make a lot of sense to me, man. 
Oh, like what? He asks. She and Penny both reminded me that it was not Alistair who killed Mom, it was Penny using Dad's body. Everything he has done and said was Penny's spell, he fought every day to fight that spell, he cried in his head every day for Mom and us, but could not break through, I say. Yes, I know the feeling, that is how it was for me when Raven put her spell on me. I could see and hear everything going on but could not stop my body or mouth, Marcus says. I think we need to sit and talk to Dad Marcus. We have to forgive what we saw, it was not him. We have to stop blaming him and fix our relationship with him, at least that is what I am going to do, I say. I agree Damien, it is time we get our father back, we know the truth now. Says Marcus. That is what Chol had been trying to tell me all along. It's about time you boys figured that out. Came a weak voice. We both look towards Chloe and see she is looking at us with a smile on her face. She's awake. C-H-L-O-E we both say. Chapter 45 Marcus Damien and I have made things right with our father. He is going to join his pack to mine and retire like he wanted to do six years ago. The house Chloe and I were having built before everything happened has finally been completed. Chloe and our son are being released from the hospital today. I have had the Omegas working hard on getting everything we picked for each room in and set up. I wanted to surprise Chloe when I take her home. Since the horrible death of Alex, I have made Alex my beta, he did not want to return to college anyway. Brooke has decided that Sheeta did not want to return to college either, she wants to travel for a while and find herself again. Losing her brother was an extremely hard blow to her life. She will leave in a week to begin her travels. Today we will hold a funeral for Alex, he deserves a proper burial. Are you ready to leave, my love? I ask Chloe, entering the room. Yes, please, I need to get out of here. She answers. I take the baby who we still have not named from her arms so she can get dressed to leave. Harper has picked out a black dress and shoes for you to wear to Alex's funeral, I tell her. Leaving the hospital, we head to the funeral services. There is not a dry eye in the house as the minister talks beautiful words about Alex. When Brooklyn takes the floor to talk about her childhood with her big brave brother, and how he had always been there to protect her from all the bad in the world, people started to cry louder. Their father was my father's beta, but when he betrayed my father, his pack, and all werewolf kind, he was cast out and took his wife and kids with him. Rogues killed their mother, and he turned to abusing Brooke. Alex took Brooke away from her abusive father when she was 11 and brought her back here. Alex was always protecting her, her whole life. When the funeral finally ended, Chloe wiped her eyes and embraced Brooke in a tight hug. When you are all done traveling, you come on home where you belong, little Alex is going to need his auntie in his life, Chloe tells her. Brooke had a shocking look on her face, then turned her head to the baby. You mean, you are naming him after my brother? She asked, Alex did a lot for me, Brooke, he was there for me when I needed him with all the Marcus stuff, he stopped me from taking my own life and was even going to leave this pack with me, he was Marcus's best friend. There is no other person I would ever want to name my son after, Chloe says, a tear rolling down her cheek. Brooke leans down into the stroller and picks up little Alex. Alex would be so honored and happy to know you're named after him L.A., and as one of your aunties, I love you very much. I am going to spoil you so rotten, she says to the baby. How can I possibly travel now, when Elda needs me to protect him? Little Alex is so blessed to have so many people in his life loving him, I say. Richard Brooks even has a surprise for Chloe of his own. Everyone is in on the reveal of the house and is helping me surprise her. Marcus, perhaps you will allow me to go first with my surprise. I am sure once she sees your surprise that is all she is going to care about. Richard laughs. Sure Richard, let us start I say. 
Chloe, honey, can you come here please? Everyone gather around please, Richard would like to say something I say. Everyone gathers around Richard, Harper, and Chloe in the center. Chloe, since the day I met you, you touched my heart. You are one very strong woman who has gone through so much in her short life, including losing your parents. I was so honored to fill your father's shoes at your wedding, but now Chloe, Harper and I would love to make you a permanent member of our family. With your permission Chloe, I want to adopt you as my daughter, says Richard. And my sister, says Harper with a smile. Chloe begins to cry. Well, what do you say Chloe, will you be my daughter? Yes, yes, Chloe says with excitement. Everyone claps and cheers loudly as the three of them embrace in a hug. Attention everyone I say. The last year has been hell on each of us, for Damien our father and me the past six years have been hell. I am happy to announce that things between my father have been mended. My father Alistair Cannon and his pack will be joining our pack as Alistair retires, but remains close to his family. With the horrible death of Alex, and I gone and made my brother Damien my next beta. He could never replace Alex, but I am sure he will be a great beta, I announced. And last, before all the chaos of the last year Chloe and I had begun to build our own home. We had wanted to have moved in it by Christmas, but seeing of that did not happen. Chloe my love it is with great honor I give this to you I hand her a small box. With a bright smile on her face. Chloe opens the box, a key? She says looking at me confused. If you will all follow me, please, I take a blindfold and tie it around Chloe's eyes. I lead everyone up to where we had our house built. Once we reach the front of the house I stop, Chloe, I want you to know how much I love and appreciate you. You are more than just my mate, you are my wife, the keeper of my heart, the other half of my soul, the mother of my son. You complete me in every way. So while you were healing in the hospital I went ahead and did this I said reaching up and removing the blind fold from her eyes then step aside. Chloe's gasps, her hands flying to cover her mouth, her eyes so big. Oh my god, you finished our house, she says jumping into my arms. I put her down, she runs to the front door and uses her key to unlock the door for the first time. Everyone wipe your feet, she says, then enters her house. Everyone laughs and follows her in. For the next three hours Chloe entertains her pack and family in her new house. This is a happy day, other than the sad depart of burying our dear friend and family member Alex, to finally be able to live free without the fear, to have mended relationships to new beginnings and new family. I could not be happier and so honored my son Alex will have each and every one of you in his life guiding him, I love you all. Says Chloe. After everyone leaves, Chloe and I rock our son to sleep. I am sorry I did not discuss the name of our son with you Marcus, I hope you are not upset with me. She says, of course, I am not mad baby, I could not think of a better name for him I said. Alex has always been a big part of my life, it is so hard, it is not the same without him, but now I have a part of him with me always in little Alex I say. Chloe kisses me softly, yes, we do she says kissing little Alex's nose. 20 years later. Today I step down and hand over the alpha rank to my son Alex Knight. I cannot be any prouder of the man he has become. He is going to be one hell of an alpha. Hurry up, you are going to be late for your own alpha ceremony. I'm coming old man sheesh, says Alex. Where is mom the twins, and Corvin? He asks. They are helping your mate get ready, we should head down. I answer. Yes, that's right more children, I am happy to announce Chloe and I have twin 15-year-old daughters Coral and Victoria, and a second son 13-year-old Corvin, named after our mothers and her father. Alex found his mate the night he first shifted it turned out to be his junior high girlfriend Catherine, that he has been with since they were 11, he said he always knew she was his mate and well he was right. 
Ladies and gentlemen, I tease with great pride that I announce your new Alpha and Luna, Alex and Catherine Knight. The air echoes with cheers and howls. I walk over to Chloe as Alpha Alex addresses his pack for the first time. Well, my love, we are officially retired, I say. From the pack duties my love, but not parent duty, we still have the twins and Corvin to look after and watch finish growing. She reminds me. Oh, I know dear three more weddings before we are free. I laugh. Chloe smacks me playfully. Do not be marring off my children just yet, mister, it is bad enough my little Alex is married and an alpha now, she says, a tear rolling down her face. It seems just like yesterday I brought my little Alex home, where we rocked him to sleep in his room for the first time. I am not ready to let him go completely yet Marcus, he is still my baby she says. I watch as her eyes are proudly on our son. Do you think your mother my parents and Alex is watching on right now and are proud of the man little Alex has become? She asks. Most defiantly my dear, they are as proud as we are I say. When the ceremony is all over and the dancing begins, I take the hand of my wife and step out onto the dance floor where we dance the night away. Chloe. In the past 20 years I have been so happy and at peace. Harper has found her mate Jake Green a wolf lawyer from Alistair's pack that had joined ours. She has given me two little nephews and a niece. Dad has retired and passed his pack down to his beta's oldest son and has moved here to our pack. Our whole family is here living together. Damien has also found his mate April. They're on baby number five now. Yes, five the horn dogs. Brooke never did travel. She changed her mind. She said she could not leave little Alex. He was hers to protect. She took a collage course here and became a teacher. She has taught all our children. Martha and Abel visit with us every holiday. They are incredibly special to me. It is because of them my baby lived. And we were able to beat the witches. Sadly no one has heard from Harmony, but according to Martha that is how Harmony is, she will be found again when she is needed. Every once in a while I catch her sent towards the mountain, I know she is close and watching over us all. Okay my handsome husband, I think it is time to check out of this party and check into our own upstairs I say wiggling my eyebrows at him. You do not have to ask me twice baby he says pulling me towards the house. Slow down dear we have to at least say our good nights and tells the girls they have an hour left before bed and I want to make sure Corvin is sleeping first, I said. Once we make our rounds, Marcus lifts me over his shoulder like a firefighter and runs towards our room. Once we hit our room, the poor dress I had on never stood a chance. Next day. In the last 20 years once a week I would come here to Alex's grieve and talk to Alex. I miss him dearly. It has been 20 years, but I still cry all the time for him. The wind blows and a lily lands on my lap. I smile as I pick it up and smell it. Thank you, Alex. I return home and place the lily into my keep sake book with all the other lilies. That had landed on my lap every time I would visit Alex. I kept them all in here. Everything okay, mom? Asks, Alex coming into the room. Everything is perfect little Alex, everything is perfect. I say closing the book.